don't know about that. It has a good soundtrack, I guess. I never played on sale. Doki Doki Literature Club? <laughs> what the fuck? Bloons TD6. God game it's it. Like a lot of my a lot of my some of my favorite games of all time are on this list. Wait, Tuggy Duggy Literature Club? Wait, isn't this some weird game where like people are killing themselves or something? Or is that just a meme to like generate PR? Wait, Doki. It's free. Valheim had a new update with Ice Caves. That looks sick, dude. Let's go play the game. Hell yeah, this looks fucking sick, dude. Fucking sign me up. Let's go, baby. Doki Doki Literature Club. I mean, this is one of the top rated games of all time. I mean, fuck. I can't get wrong, right? Um. Uh... Oh, fuck, why can't I pause? Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay. All right. She's she's just playing this game. Okay. Wait, what the fuck? Okay. Okay. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Individuals suffering from anxiety and depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. Oh fuck. Content wanting to please visit. Uh, I agree. Playing Ducky Ducky Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age and you consent uh, to your exposure of highly disturbing content. Is this content. one of those cartoon games that shows boobies? The wait, honest it's, chat. Wait, this hasn't got porn in it or something, right? Is this, is this got fucking porn in it, dude? Or am I, like, what's happening here? No, it doesn't. Okay, am I good? Uh... What is this? Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay, what the fuck is this? Okay. Um. Wait, I need to get the borderless full screen, right? I need to. I need to get the borderless full screen. Monster Hunter World is on sale right now. Just saying. list of games and didn't flinch when you saw this game and played it right away. That means I mean, it's super I read it, it looks like cringe as fuck, so I gotta click it. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air. Like she's totally obvious to my attention. She might... Wait, what? Like she's totally oblivious to any attention. She might draw to herself. This girl is Sayori, my neighbor, and good friends since we were children. Okay. You know, the kind of friends you never see yourself ma making today. But it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. She got big titties. Big anime titties. Hell yeah. We used to walk to school together on days like this. But started... Starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and 
Uh, I would get tired of waiting up. Is this your Twitch mandated punishment for calling Weebs pathetic the other day? But if she's going to chase after me like this, I always feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sari catch up to me. I overslept again! But I called you this time! Maybe, and only because I decided to stop and wait for you! Oh, that's me! Maybe because I, uh... Only because I decided to stop and wait for you, damn straight. <laughs> you said that like you were thinking about ignoring me! That's mean, Quan! Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Okay, dude, shit, homie. Fine, fine. Okay, I can't read this. But you did wave me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to, to be mean even if you want to. I'm such a nice guy. Whatever you say, Siri. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. Dyslexic streamed my plays weave text game. What could possibly go wrong? Monka Heli watches white people happy smokes while running over civilians of Chicago and fat dank people is also there too. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Quan, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm in not... I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you joined a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our uh, many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Oh shit, that's Giga Chad, dude. Just ignore the woman. Sari likes to worry a little too much about me, but I'm perfectly content of just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Might as well throw on the Fuba model to complete the look. Uh -huh. I was talking about uh, how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. <laughs> Is this like a software weeb game? Wait, what the fuck? It's just like... Ultra pandering to weeps? Is that what's happening? Your happiness is really important to me, you know? So wait, is this like simulating what it'd be like to have an actual girlfriend? Okay. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years where well, you're not used to the, the real things world. this man is willing to do to avoid playing actual games is this impressive. Is this game is literally same rating as fucking Hades and Blooms and Portal 2. Like, this is this is a game is the same rating as this Valheim. Okay? So why am I giving this a try? You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. Oh, the classic, uh... Giving into the uh, the girlfriend dynamic. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll uh, promise you that. Oh, uh, cringe promise, dude. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Um. Uh, wait, how old is she? Actually, never mind. More than that, I'm surprised. I could even uh. Let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Oh wow. School day is ordinary as ever, and it's uh, over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. So you already wanted me to check out some clubs. 
I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. What? <laughs> Hello? Siori? Siori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and I realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. Wait, is this gonna be some nightmare where she's actually hey, a demon? Quinn, are you built in a manner that differs from others? Um, I'm pretty idiosyncratic when it comes to a lot of things. But anyway, I thought I'd, I thought I'd uh, get you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me. It was going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so uh, I thought, you know. You know what? Well, you'd like to go to my club. Oh, God, what's our club, dude? Why is she permanently One, blushing, dude? Here's the prime and amount. Peace. <laughs> Siori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to join your club. <laughs> Me. Oh, look at her, dude. Oh, look at her, dude. Siori is the vice president of the uh, literature club. Not that I was ever uh, aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only do it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. She was uh, the first one to show interest after one who proposed the club. She inherited the title of Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? I agree. I, I seem lame as fuck. I seem lame as fuck, dude. Well... I kind of told the club yesterday I'd bring in a new member. Okay, dude. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. Oh, Jesus. I sound like such an insult, dude. Just go to just go to the literature club. What the fuck? I can't tell Siri is uh, really that much of an airhead, or uh, guys. If she is so cunning as to plan out all of this. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> fine, fine, I'll stuff for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Okay, you didn't do it for the cupcake. You did it because you fucking... Okay, I, we know why you did it. Okay. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs. A section of the school I really visit. Being generally used for the third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh, I glance around the room. <laughs> Girl wants it. Welcome to the literature club. I'm so pleasure meeting you. She already always said nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy? Why the kill the atmosphere? Oh, Quan, what a nice surprise! Welcome to the club! I ellipsis them. I just ellipsis them, bro. All words escape me in this situation. Oh, I'm, sorry, cause I'm surrounded by little waifus. By lolly waifus. This club. It's full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. That's okay. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude, whose apparently name is Natsuki, is uh, the one I didn't recognize. This 
small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She looks like she's 12. I'm going to be honest. She looks like she's 12. You're also the one who made cupcakes, according to Siori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Siori uh, says that quietly into my ear. And then turns back. Oh, wait. She's supposed to whisper it. Then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is that Tuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri. Dude, we had a Japanese exchange student called Yuri. No cap. The smartest in the club. Don't, don't, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears uh, comparably more mature and timid. What's kind of, this is so weird, bro. Why is he talking about how mature they are and shit? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Seems to, uh... I've had a hard time keeping up with uh, people like Siori and Natsuki. Oh, uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right! It's great to see you again, Kwan. <laughs> Monica smiles sweetly. We all do, we know, uh, we do know each other well. We really talked, but uh, we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Oh, Jesus Christ. Basically completely out of my league. So having a smile at me makes me so... Wait, having a smile at me so genuinely feels a little... This is genuinely peak content. Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Quan. We made a room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. Oh, do I get the pig? I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them, so I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. So now about the, uh... Oh, wait, that's a woman. So now about I make some tea as well. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Siori mentioned it's uh, widened so there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Siori. Is this some sort of sick intervention where they're making you choose a girl? Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a rapid tray and Yuri opens the closet. Oh fuck. Still feeling uh, awkward, I take a seat next to Siori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Okay, of course I look like little cats. Jesus Christ. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, I took you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Siri grabs some first Monica and I follow. It's delicious! Siri talks with a mouthful and has already managed to get icing on her face. Oh, fuck. I turn the cupcake around on my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. Oh, God. I haven't watched the uh, stream for guys. a bit because I didn't want to spoil Elden Ring and I come back to this. <laughs> what did Elden Ring do to him? Chat? Did it finally break him? Oh, shit, she's I nervous. mean, you don't want it. It's better to... It's better when it comes to judging the age of a woman. Okay. It's better to always overestimate. Right? When it comes to, you know, it's a better to, but then don't say it out loud. <laughs> I mean, it sounds so bad, bro. It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't help but notice her uh, sneaking glances in my direction. Dude, she's 12, man! She's a first year! Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The 
The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. <laughs> Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Monka Heli watches white people happy smokes while running over civic. It's not like I... Haven't I heard this from somewhere before? I, I think this. you should play Minecraft instead of this. Made them for you or anything? Oh shit, but she's blushing dude and sweating dude. Yeah, I thought uh, you technically did. Siri said. Well, Shut. maybe. This game is actually harder than Elden <laughs> Ring, but only for Quinn because he cannot read 777 sex trajectory trillion 777 Quinn trajectory What do you all trajectory trillion 777? I'm skip. Why is it skipping? All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places the teacup in front of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a cup of hot tea I help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that's not. Why are they? Is this seriously like a fucking anime girl thirst simulator? Where you just have a bunch of anime girls thirsting after you and you're just like a Giga Chad? Is that where it's seriously? But why are they making the fucking 12 year old girl fucking thirst after you? That's weird as fuck, dude. Okay. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I didn't mean that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a uh, pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. <laughs> Stand up, I'm completely flaccid right now. These are, these are, these things are abominations, okay? Why are their eyes so big? How come they have such large breasts? Considering how, like, uh, skinny they are. Doesn't make any sense. I'm glad. Yuri finally smiles to herself and wait. Yuri finally smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and then smiles at me. So, uh, what made you consider the literature club? Uh, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Yuri. Of course, you tell her that, bro. Well, I haven't joined any club yet, and Siri seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? Okay, dude, this is not at all how it would go down. Alright. Wait, should I turn the music? You are pretty right. Maybe I turn the music down a little bit. As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica. I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you the leader of the debate club <laughs> last year? Wait, did she tell me she's a debate lord? She's a she's a debate lord. Okay. She she does not look autistic enough. <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, uh, I, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Feels like nothing but arguing but, but about the budget and publicity. But, and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take uh, something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica's a really great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Okay, I don't. Yuri's pretty bad chess. Um, then I'm surprised there aren't any uh, more people on the club yet. Must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are interested in putting out uh, all the effort into starting something brand new. 
Wait, are they some evil psycho woman? And every time they invite someone to the new club, they fucking murder you? Is this like that fucking K-pop song where they invite boys around to their house and then torture them? Is that why they're being so fucking nice? I don't trust this at all. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident we can uh, all really grow in this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about it. literature. So, Quan, uh, what kind of things do you like to read? Uh, well, uh... Considering how little I've read the past few years, I don't have a really good way of answering that. Manga. <laughs> Is this like a weeb's wet dream, dude? Like a bunch of attractive girls inviting to their literature club and they ask them about anime and then they're going to be really interested and be like, Oh my god, I love anime! I muttered quietly to myself, half joking. Oh, he muttered it. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Oh, no. The 12 year old one, the first year one's a fucking a weeb, dude. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that could change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, uh, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of a teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Oh, fuck. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them all is amazing to me. Telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. So what, she's reading Game of Thrones? Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved by and timid since the moment I walked in. But it's obviously by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immense to me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Oh shit, dude. Oh fuck, what imagine what sex shit has he imagined? They've all imagined some sex shit like abducting a fucking anime boy weeb and then fucking torturing him to death. Anyway. I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Yeah, I'm the person, dude. I'm the person. I said, I have imagination, so you're not fooling me. Woman, you're not fooling me. Uh, guys. Ah, uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. I read Goosebumps, chat, so, you know. This right, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rook. Really? Uh, I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. Someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. A bit of a story makes me think or makes me, uh... Or takes me to another world that I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. Only for a brief moment. Oh, God. Ugh. I hate horror. Oh, why that? Well, I just... Because she's a weep, Jet. Natsuki's eyes died over to me for a split second. Never mind. Oh shit, dude. Oh shit, dude. It's this game, like, what the fuck? That's right. You usually uh, like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? 
What? What? What gives you that idea? You let the scrap of paper in the last club meeting. It looks like you're working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And I give that, give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Okay, this is fucking weird, bro. She's 12, dog. Siri slides up behind her ticket and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm no cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Yeah, well, I guess sometimes. Buddy, you care. I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I'm such a giga chat. Holy fuck, just dominating. I'm coming in here and just dominating them. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is uh, to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing them even the deepest reaches of your heart. Oh shit. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Uh... Maybe if you share some of uh, your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable uh, to share hers. Uh. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, uh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Ellipsis question mark? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um, ellipsis. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, uh, now that we have a new member, I think uh, it will help us get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Kwan? Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Oh, shit. Hold on. There's still one problem. <laughs> eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I've never said I would join this club! Siori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Oh, They're all staring, dude. Oh shit, chat's staring as well. What the fuck? Uh, but... I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> Come on. You... You all... I'm dispenseless against these girls. <laughs> Why does it seem like a start of like some weird porno? Some fucking Japanese schoolgirl porno, like from weeb hentai shit. Like, well, they're just like, you're just getting dominated by four girls. I'm, def <laughs> I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make clear the decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. All right, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Oh, God. Yes, I'm so happy. Oh, Siri wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Oh, my God. Hey, hey. You really just scare me for a moment. If you really just gave me the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. And that makes it official! Welcome to the Literature Club! Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone! I think uh, with that, we can officially end today's meeting and go on a, uh, on a good note. Everyone remember the tonight's assignment. Write a promo and bring it to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. 
take one. I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? <laughs> I already feel anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girl... <laughs> I love that's anxiety. Okay, sure. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat and Yuri and Nat Jackie clean up their food. Hey, Kwan, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayaria and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for the clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! Oh, fuck. With that, the two of us depart from the club room and make our way home. Then, uh, the whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Siori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really, uh, will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll, uh, have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. That's exactly why you're doing it, you dirty dog! That's exactly why, not one of them, though, she's 12! Okay, she's fucking 12, alright? Yeah! Okay, you want to go for Yuri or Monica, all right? Yuri or Monica, all right? That's your BFF. You don't mess with friends, okay? That's your B She's 12. That's your BFF. You want to tap one of these two. All right. Um, I just need to make most of my circumstances here, and I'm sure Good Fortune will find me. Wait, what? I just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure Good Fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Time to write a poem. Pick your words. You think the favorite color you will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your one the most. Okay. Agonizing. Massacre. Festering disaster. Effluent. The fuck is effluent? Brightly or radiant. Empty. Misfortune. Cry. Fantasy. Sensation. Broken. Unrestrained graveyard. Pleasure. Uncontrollable. Anxiety. Anger. Depression. Contamination. Crimson. Raindrops. Yuri's gonna love this shit. Yuri's gonna love this shit. Yuri's gonna fucking be coming when she sees this, dude. Holy fuck. Hi, Genkwan! Glad to see you didn't run away from us! Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Kwan. <laughs> Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making your dive head first into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on! Think he deserves any slack! Sorry, told me you didn't even want to join the clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out, or what. But if you don't take that seriously, then we, then you won't see the end of it. Now, Thuki, you're certainly having a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. All the weebs go for the 12-year-old, right? All, all the weebs go for the 12-year-old, right? Cause she like likes anime and shit and she looks like she's fucking 12 and she's a first year bro. Like, oh my god. Mm, mm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and Manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry guys. Kwan always gives us his best as long as he's having fun. Mate, my guy has literally already said he's only here because he wants to deep deck one of these skills. Okay, that's literally what he said. He helps me with my <laughs> busy work without me even asking. Uh, 
Like cooking and cleaning my room. Oh god. How dependable. Siori. Oh, it's Siori. That's because your room is as messy and it's uh, distracting. And you almost I, I, I set your house on fire once. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come you and Quan became friends together too? Um, um. <laughs> Siori. Oh, she's so oblivious and innocent. She just doesn't know what's going on at all. Oh my god. Ellipsis. As usual, Siori seems oblivious <laughs> to a weird situation she just put Oops, me into. One airing. <laughs> oh, oh. Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Siori? Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? What, did she give me a dildo or something? What is this? What, what did she bring, dude? Never mind. Sorry, man. It, uh, Siri made it sound like a big deal Weeps when it's really not. Game. Uh, what do I do? Yeah, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, uh, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. I'll, uh, make, it'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? This is our life now, chat. Quinn Gunpain Champ Quince Platt. Something's about to happen, dude. Yeah, I won't make a big deal. I won't, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want, want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. Oh, shit, I have shit, become obsessed with cooking meat over fire. I get prepared for it. I make sure I'm hungry before I cook it. The smell of the smoke and the aroma of the crackling meat ignites some ancient genetic memories. It makes cooking and eating significantly better. Okay, there we go. She reaches in to get a bag and she pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. Uh, it's a short read, so uh, it, should keep, uh, it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you want it. This is... How does this girl accidentally... Wait, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? Mate, it's because she's fucking self-aware and it's all a fucking act! She's luring you in to fucking give you cock and ball torture because she's a sick fuck! That's my prediction anyway. She even picked out a book she'll think I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now they would settle in. I spent tomorrow here to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Siori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Oh shit, what's happening? Does it one on one with me and Yuri? Spoiler. In two days, you'll need something hey, important hey, hey, hey. that will complete. Stop! Did it stop? Did it get into spoils? I'm really curious to talk to Yuri for a little bit more. So that so they're all distracted and Yuri's all by herself, isolated by herself. So now we're going in, boys. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to. I feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of her, of the cover of her book. It looks like the same books that she lent to me. <clears throat> More than that, it seems to be uh, the first few pages. Ah, uh, crap! I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and her eyes meet for a split second. Ellipsis. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. 
Sorry. I'm coming, I am. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was, uh, focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to reread some of it. <laughs> Not for any particular reason. <laughs> just curious. How you could have two copies of the same book. She rented it from the fucking library, homie? Ah. Well, I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Bitch. And, uh, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. You want the dick? Wait, uh, there's something, uh, fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. What? She's not 12. She's in her 20s, bro. Or something. Okay, my character specifically said she's mature. Okay. All right, buddy. <laughs> stand up. Stand <laughs> up. Stand. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's very engaging and a relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well, mm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in Chat with her so long lost cute today. Ayayumonka Heli watches wide people happy smokes while. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. <laughs> and while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately Wiki choose says she's 18. Trust. You are okay, my dude. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. This is kind of... This is kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came out of nowhere. <laughs> Yuri giggles all of a sudden. She's like 16, a... right? She's like 16, but she's like really fit. Right, really fit, like extremely mature for her age, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop, dude. Are you, <laughs> Are you a fan of that sort of thing, Quan? <laughs> no, it's not that. I mean, I could definitely enjoy those kind of stories, so don't worry. I watch anime. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that uh, Yuri's into guys. those things. So, she's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just those kind of stories. They uh, challenge you to look uh, at a life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals and their own philosophy they will, they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you were uh, related guys. to a protagonist, they made out to be uh, the naive one, for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey. Don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. Why am I listening to anything she's saying? It's only because she's fucking a cute anime girl. Right? Like, that's the only reason I'm fucking acting interested right now. I mean, but <laughs> fair enough, actually. But, any but I feel like uh, I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I forget to pay attention to other people. Uh, so I'm, guys. Uh, so I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. Please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you uh, need to worry. I'm a massive cook. That just means you're passionate about reading. 
The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, that's... <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you, you don't have to. Uh, what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you were, you were looking forward to it. Ellipsis. Let me just get the book. Oh, shit. Did she write something in the book? Did she leave a note in the book? Why would she want me to not look at it right now? I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. All right, it's fine if I just sit here, right? I slip... I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. God damn, slipping into that seat right next to Yuri right now. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little uh, apprehensive. Guys. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the, the prologue. I soon understood what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel the presence of my shoulder as I read. <laughs> Mate, you've just got an erection, bro. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pepe alarm. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. So sorry. Yeah, I was just... Yuri, you really, uh, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> yeah, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between... Then I hold my book more between the two of them. Oh, shit, dude. Oh, shit, we're reading the book. No shot. Uh, I suppose so. Okay, the other girls are gonna be immediately like, what the fuck is Yuri and Monka Heli watches doing? white people happy smokes while running over civilians of Chicago and fat dang people room. is also there too. Like, holy shit. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we uh, each lean in a bit, our shoulders are almost touching. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Feels like my arm is uh, in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it difficult to turn the page. Oh, she's gonna have to turn the page now, isn't she? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> this is like a wave girlfriend simulator, dude. Holy shit! Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Wait, what? Her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb. Ah! Ah! I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. That'd be such an awkward way to read a book. Like, you just be like this? You're gonna get a sore neck, like, instantly, bro. Like, are you kidding me? But again, he's not doing that. He's doing it because he's trying to, you know, okay, ultimately. We're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. As if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's uh, in the corner of my vision. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you ready? Uh, to turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a dis bit distracted for a second. By your massive anime titties. Uh, I glanced over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. Oh my god. Quinn, oh there's someone at the door. FBI, open up! 
I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Crawford. This is Steven Jensen, a talent scout for Funimation. We got word of your voice acting abilities and had to witness it ourselves. Simply breathtaking work. If you can so effortlessly become a 13-year-old schoolgirl, what could you do with a role designed for you? We have an upcoming anime with a small troll character that constantly chimes in with unprovoked <laughs> stories that are clearly fake, is a misogynist, and whose only skill is playing video oh, games shut badly. The fuck up, are shut you the interested? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I assume that she's finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page feels almost like an intimate exchange. <laughs> Jesus! Ah, oh, my thumb! Gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she clenches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. <clears throat> this might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. She's not 15! Yuri's not 15! You've edited that! She's... They said she was mature. I chose the most mature one. What? She's literally 12, bro, you sick fuck. Uh, guys? You think so? Wait, what? Can I get backwards? Oh, fuck. What did he... Oh, reminds her of the main character. How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all of the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of uh, some of your mannerisms. I see. <laughs> you remain silent for a moment. But Quan, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Oh, that's so embarrassing you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I didn't uh, know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. Ellipsis. I guess, uh... I meant more, it's kind of... cute. Ah! Are you... What are you saying all of a sudden? Ellipsis! Exclamation point! Okay, everyone! Ellipsis! Exclamation point! She keeps getting... She's getting frights. Repeatedly. I think it's time we share today's poems with each other. We might not, uh, uh, we might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you've, uh, if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book. Call Causing it to close on top of my thumb. Oh shit. No fucks giving. Alright. I guess I'll do more reading tonight. You got cucked, brother. Oh, would you prefer I only read it with you? Oh my god! Um. I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read it more tonight. It'll be more fun to read it with you after it picks up a little bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. That's right, you just listen to me, you little cuck. Only the first two chapters. Nothing more. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left the book and then slip it back into my bag. By the way, do you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I really, I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? So Tori says, I can't wait! 
Satori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Satori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who would you show it to first? <laughs> Yuri. Okay. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. Ellipsis. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? Ellipsis question mark? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth. But then ends up covering her whole face! didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? Huh? That's... Yeah, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. <sighs> so, what kind of uh, writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Well, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time. Really? Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly and then looks at my palm again. Ellipsis. Does she not believe me, bro? Well, I know that. I just didn't... I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger on the words in the poem. As if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason, uh, this, this is the reason I was able to tell. It's just there's a lot of specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that they both, the style and the expressiveness, are weakened. What the fuck are you saying to me, dude? Once Yuri finds her train of thought, she, uh, as it says, her demeanor totally changes. Big entertainment. I must admit, when I started watching Twitch, I never thought I would be so entertained by a scuffed voice acting when reading a entire story to a bunch of degenerate coomers. Thank you. <laughs> True. Okay. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's uh, not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that can go into writing, even a simple poem. Not finding them uh, and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but all that comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that uh, everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um. Well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about other people like that. Sorry. It's fine. It's, I'm not sure if you're apologizing to herself or to me or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if this is a rare opportunity for her. Which is itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? The ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. <laughs> Click out of the bomb area to continue. Ellipsis. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. 
What? I wasn't thinking that at all. I was actually thinking that. It was dog shit. I could barely read it. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. Quinn and chat. I researched it. And all tractors are 18. That is why we are having a solo contest in the Discord right now. We are all posting the hottest sexes and most safe for work images of all these tractors. Any not safe for work stuff will be banned. In conclusion, I had a chicken ranch wrap for lunch and it was pretty good. And Quinn embracing his weep self and I did I did oh rap. And if it is a thing, What he was trying to say is. What the fuck is wrong with the Hassan DDS, dude? Holy shit. He was trying to say is, dude. <laughs> He's just like. Hey, 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 hey. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since that's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little bit more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost, Jerry? Hoo -hoo. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Quan. It wasn't. Wasn't it about after? It's in some dystopian future, right? That's what she said. Wasn't that? I I, I imagine like some dystopian future where the and the last light is flickering and going out, and like the new world of neon lights. Is that, okay, let's see what it's about. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you uh, did only glance over it after all. Remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolic compared to a ghost, lingering in a last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought about that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours is impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. <laughs> I'm such a simp cuck. You think so? Yeah, of course. <sighs> you know, I was really nervous about uh, doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing uh, my best for you, Quan. <laughs> uh, me too. Oh my god, do I have to go through all of them? No way! I have to seriously get dog shit advice from three more anime girls? Wait, let's go to the fucking 12 year old. That way she'll just be like, Yeah, your poem sucks. It's not even about anime. It's too dark and fucked up. Let's just question back. Let's just question. Juan, if you're not going to take the club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. You what? You expect me to actually believe you put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a... Oh, I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in the effort. We all start somewhere, right? You're still proud of, uh... If you're still proud of the first one you wrote, then I'd like to read it. Oh, shit. Get fucking destroyed, Natsuki. Exclamation point, exclamation point. Painful to think about. Ellipsis. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. She, to be fair, Natsuki knows what's up. He knows that I'm just trying to tap. He just knows I'm trying to... I mean, dude, we were like literally, I'm like on the second day, I'm in there holding the book of the other one. Like, she knows what I'm here for. She's, okay. He? Wait. <laughs> what the fuck's her name? Yuri? She knows, she knows I'm just trying to hit Yuri. Fair enough. Well, each of their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. She's gonna type, is this gonna be some weep shit, dude? <laughs> She's actually 12, dude. Eagles can fly. 
Monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. They really trying to push this like fucking weird like this is like the Vito bird fucking this is the Vito bird dynamic dude. Okay, this is, they're really pushing the like she's like the the infant brain, you know. Yeah, I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. Isn't the point of poems and people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. That I'm such a cuck simp and just pander to every single person I talk to. Holy shit. I would've just told her it's, yeah, it's trash. Like, it looks like my fucking, like, my five-year-old child could make a better poem than that. Uh, it's like, uh, I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. <laughs> like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can really be disheartening. So I've decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other thing uh, nice about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps me bring, uh, helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess it went more into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. 51 month and I tune into this weird day. Is it weird takeover day? Ay -ay -ay. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Uh, she, I told you she's fucking 12. I told you. Like, I don't want to know what the secret ending is for this. Whether you pursue this character, dude. Like, do you get caught by that? Hopefully it's an FBI ending. Hopefully they have an FBI ending. For, and, then they, and then it also reports you to the actual police. You know? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to human her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but Natsuki is uh, feeling proud. Then I won't take that away from her. Holy shit. Holy shit, just fucking torture me already or something. Siori, ellipsis. This is a good poem, Kwan. Are you sure this is your first time? Of, of course. It's not that good. I'm the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare t Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? Yeah, I guess you're right. But that's uh, why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy you wrote one. It reminds me of uh, okay. how you really are a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm really not into it yet. But that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Quan. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? <laughs> my, <laughs> my guy's reasoning was because there was four cute girls and he could potentially get a fucking laid, bro. That's literally what he said, bro. What are you... He's being selfish as fuck. Trying new things, uh, like, uh, for other people. That's something uh, re only really good people do. Oh my god, he's literally a nice guy, bro. He's literally a nice guy. That's what he is, dude. Thanks, Yuri. Hopefully they don't reinforce the nice guy behavior. Hopefully the nice guy gets completely annihilated here. I'm not sure if Sayori uh, sees a full picture of, of my motive here. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> then again... I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'd be a way of thanking you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, it's, uh, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay, this is good writing. Let's look and read this. 
Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret. But I trust you too. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Oh my god. Literally nobody exists like this. This is like every anime girl ever. The ultra like unaware, just pure, innocent, totally fucking um... It's like this binary thing where they're just like this pure good. But then they have massive anime titties. Theory. Uh, this is uh, just a guess, but did you wait? Uh, did you wait this morning to write this? No, just a little bit. Uh, you can answer just a little bit. Uh, you, you can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, that at least makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Easy so game I was Elden Ring. Next one is gonna be nothing. <laughs> it just sounds like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get a little cranky. Okay, that's you need to do keto, okay? You're not having it. That's because your blood sugar levels are dropping. Okay, being hangry is literally because your blood sugar is dropping because you're relying too much on carbohydrates, okay? Seriously. Well, I guess there's no point arguing. Anyways, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Okay, Monica's totally evil, and she's the absolute giga ringleader of this whole thing, right? She's a sick fuck, right? Monica's a sick fuck. Hey, Quan. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Glad, good to hear it. By the way, since you're the new uh, and everything, uh, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. The final boss is Chris Hansen. If you lose, <laughs> he asks you to just take a seat right over there. Of course, um, I'm a f I'll be afraid to bring these things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of, uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I, I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Quan. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know? That's the sort of barrier that we'll uh, learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mmm. Great job, Glenn. I was going, ooh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. True. That way, it always counts when I put some some effort. Yo, that's the that's the play, dude. That's it's the art of war, boys. Okay. When you're at, when you're at your weakest, make yourself look strong, and when you're at your strongest, make yourself look weak. Okay. <laughs> that's not very fair. Ah, what the hell's this? Stop! 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 You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? You got damn right. You got damn right I know that. Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Satori who likes to use simple and direct words to describe happiness and if sadness. If you're trying to keep our expectations low, Quan, this game definitely is getting you there. Holy shit, dude. It's about to pop off, I'm sure. Yuri likes it when readers are left had to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write that like that effectively. 
both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has it at this point. I never really asked though. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry too much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep on exploring and learning by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying a lot of things. Wait, I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try some new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else uh, might be a little bit biased towards their own kind of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write in a way that everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you're going to have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> uh... <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, it's not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. This is my first time seeing this secret ending for Elden Ring. What did you do to the lands in between, you sick bastard? A hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See? The direction the speckle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film let out of in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. What the fuck? Jesus Christ! She's like permanently scanned by this? What the fuck kind of hole? Was this a glory hole? What kind of hole was she like looking through? I don't even know, I don't even know dude. What the fuck? <laughs> so, what do you think? Hmm, it's very... Freeform. If that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not the right person to talk to and ask for feedback. Ah, <laughs> it's okay! Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That's a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What's the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. Nice game. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's uh, kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is... If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you're just gonna get a dark puddle of ink. Sounds like a dog shit pen, dude. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Holy shit. Just fucking torture me. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. I was a little bit more stressful than I anticipated. As if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to this. This is literature club after all. I sigh. <sighs> I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They are gingerly exchanging sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As I read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. 
Itsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. Ironic that you are playing a game entirely dedicated to reading, yet spent 50 games on League of Legends without reading a single ability. Shut the fuck up. You have a list of amazing games and somehow chose something worse than just chatting. What the fuck, <sighs> Quinn? She's 12. They're all 12. Quinn, stop, this is cringe. <laughs> What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk in one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How could that be cute? I, I know that. Uh, I just guys. The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Yeah. You meant, to, you mean you have to try out to come up with something that's nice to say? <laughs> Thanks, but I really didn't come out nice at all. This is like the, the fucking triggered little girl that's... Uh, like, they have this archetype in animes. Um... You know, she's like the blind chick out of Avatar, the last Airbender, for example. Um, she, they're like the the they're like they're constantly underrated and they get like mad at everything. And then yeah, you know, it's like this. The, I've seen it. There's a bunch of animes and it's the same character. And this is like the super deep cute girl who's always nervous and apologizing. And then you got the super cl like the, they're, they're all like archetypes out of anime, dude. The most popular one is the one that grew up next to me. That's like the, the super innocent, oblivious girl who's like fucking doesn't understand that what she's doing is like overly flirtatious and fucking. Yeah, okay, anyway, we've confirmed. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> Classic thing that this, our character says. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. See, I already liked it. And Kwanya too. So based on that, I'll gladly uh, give you some suggestions of. My, wait. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Quite like my poem too, you know. <laughs> this Even game is six hours and nothing happens. It's just the same shit over and over. Please end the meme. Stop. He even told me he was impressed by it. That Suki suddenly stands up. Oh! I didn't realize he was so invested Punk, in trying to impress. to the principal's office immediately. You are in big, big trouble. <laughs> Okay. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member. Jimmy. Quinn, can we please get the tuba camera while you play this game? Thanks. It's a little too much effort. I have to like click two buttons or something dude, to do that. Like, uh, studio mode, master camera. To whom it may concern, this is Amazon Audiobooks. We've noticed you have been reading out Doki Doki Literature Club on stream. We are writing you today to ask that you cease and desist at once. Your voice acting is going to put us out of business. Boom. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member. Assuming they are over 18, make sure to prepare their asses with a finger before putting your dick in. Greetings. What the fuck? Okay. Eh? That's not what I... Uh, you know, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Yeah. I can't stand up on the song. Uh, maybe you're just jealous that Quan appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he appreciates my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <gasps> Um, I 
everyone okay today? Well, you know what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Girls are fighting over me now, dude. Cause I'm just that Giga Chan and Big Dick. They all want the like. Holy shit! But <laughs> what has this stream become? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew with size bigger as soon as Quan started showing up. That's Suki. Um, next Suki. That's a little. It doesn't remove you. I don't like you fighting, guys! Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if I... as if they just noticed I was standing there. Quan? She's... she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true! She thought of it! If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place! What's the point of making all your bones all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out of the reader and not force him to have to figure it out. Help me explain it to a Quan! Oh my god, this is where I have to choose? Wait, is it make- Okay, it's easy choice. Wait! There's a reason that we have so many deep and expressive words in our languages. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is, uh, is not only unnecessary limiting yourself, but it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Quan? <laughs> Am I creeping you guys out? Uh... Damn. Ellipsis. How did I get dragged into this mess in the first place? Not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Why are you guys <laughs> freaking out so much? Okay, so wait. The manipulative thing to do if I'm trying to get the dick um, would be... So the neutral thing is to get Satori to help me out. This is probably what I do IRL. But because we're min-maxing here, we're just gonna go Yuri, right? Let's get, let, yeah. We're gonna go Yuri, right, for sure. Oh, shit. Okay, let me fix this thing. Okay, master camera, you guys freaked out too much of this. Like, you guys are really, oh, fuck, what the fuck? GoPro. Okay, fix. Yeah, Suki. Uh, I think you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. You wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri? Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting in uh, feelings and effort into it, and it becomes something really personal. Look, look at me, dude! Look at me mansplaining! All, all these women are fighting over me, and now I'm mansplaining to them, like, about a subject which they're, like, actually far more versed in. And I'm just some fucking noob, but because I'm like a Giga Chad mansplaining fucking guy, they're all just like waiting on e my every word. This is that real life work shit. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well. Did I really just say this? And you just told her how you felt. Oh, and if you just told her how you felt, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both did some things that you didn't mean. 
You really apologize, don't you think you should too? Why do they keep saying it? Does anyone know why they keep doing that? Like, what's she gonna say, bro? That's if she clenches her fists. Oh, shit, dude. In the end, nobody is taking her side. She's trapped at this point. Being defiant. Only because she can't handle the pressure. I ended up feeling bad for her. Um. Uh, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps her to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'll, it'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own palm up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the palm with her hands and throws it in the trash. N -n Natsuki, she didn't mean uh, she didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in the in her hands while she stares down at her desk. Oh shit, dude, Sag. I gingerly approach her, sit in a Jason chair. This is all your fault, bro. Is this kind of like what happens when, like, there's, like, a bunch of dudes and a chick comes in to the environment and all the dudes start, like, attacking each other and it turns into, like, a dick measuring contest? It's like World of Warcraft guilds. Bro. Second a girl joins the, the fucking Ray group, they all start acting like fucking morons. And all trying to be, like, the most alpha. Like, that's what's happening. Is that what's happening right now? Except the reverse, a guy comes into an all girl situation. Sai. Everything alright? I'm just so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could have anyone gotten. Oh, wait. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated no, no. to be. Why are you gonna do conk shotting? Fuck, I'm spilling my coffee everywhere! Bro, I'm gonna de kick you! You're so bad! Bro! What the fuck? There was no gold in my raid, okay, bitch? So get fucked. Get fucked. Dude, I'm telling you. Like, functionally. Functionally. In a Wool of Warcraft raiding guild. It's literally a good thing to not have a, a chick. Like. It, it, it's because they all, everyone starts acting like fucking morons. Everyone starts acting like fucking morons because they're too fucking stupid. The only way you can get away with it is by having dudes that are all in relationships already. But then how do girls ever get into the writing scene, actually, if no one ever... I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. I'm, I'm not a... It's, I'm not Quintel. It's, it's just... This is just one of those things that's true. Okay, because and it's not the girl's fault, it's the guy's fault. Okay. Imagine making a baseless claim with absolutely zero evidence about nothing. Just saying, oh, you, uh, you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. Dude, I do any guilds I've been in where I've seen this shit happen, dude. Like, I literally was streaming a guild where we had a chick in the guild and everyone started acting stupid and all started. Everyone went. Ego Andy and all started trying to impress the girl, and then they started giving a loot. I mean, that I was, I, we lived that, and I've, and it's happened multiple times. It's happened multiple times. Okay, bro. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You had it yourself as well as anyone could. I don't think anything less of you. Oh my god, I'm such a cuck, dude. Well, all right, I believe you. Thanks, Quan. You're too kind. Uh, I'm thankful to have uh, you a part of this club now. Er, uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said? About, uh, you know. Uh, I would never do anything so shameful. So, uh, what thing did Natsuki say? Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna go make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. 
Holy fuck, dude. Okay, everyone. It's about time for us to leave. How'd you feel about sharing your poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. Oh, she's back now. It was all right. Well, mostly. Quan, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Oh, no way, bro. Seriously. Wait, so what was the... Today, What I had to do that whole thing. And she talked about her boobies once. Oh, my God, dude. Really? And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your palms will turn out even better. Ellipsis. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit about the kind of palms everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job at impressing those I want to impress. <laughs> I'm such a manipulative cunt. I nod to myself with my newfound determination. Quan, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Siri beams at me. Truly has been a while since Siri and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm uh, wait, I can't I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. It would be annoying as fuck. Can I be real? This would just be annoying as fuck if she's just like acts like this all the time. Does she ever get serious? Ever? Could you even have a conversation with her that's not like some fucking real fake as fuck bullshit where she's just pretending to be fucking happy constantly? Just giggling and shit? Sorry. About what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between you and yeah. Uh, and, Doki and Doki Poki, what is this emotide? Quaff, quaff, meow, ay, 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 no, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen him fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You, uh, don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Quan, it's nice that uh, I get to spend time with you in the club. But, uh, I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. <laughs> Oh shit. Like, holy fuck. Um. Uh, oh, wait, how do I go back? Um, okay, but I think it's seeing you get along with everyone that makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's. <laughs> Every day is gonna be so much fun. Sigh. It looks like Siori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. We'll just have to uh, see what the future holds, Siori. I pat Siori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her. But it's easy to see Siori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. She's 12. She's not 12. She okay. Why are they moving on this paper here? Why are they moving on the paper here? What is this? Okay. Okay, so wait. It's too easy. Do I just impress Yuri again? Do I just easily impress Yuri again? I mean, I think I do, right? I just commit. We just go deep deck on Yuri. Like, we just min-max our chances. We just go all in. Or do I split my shit up and cause drama? Do I split my shit up and go drama? Maybe... Wait, what if we could become a two-time? What if we could go two-time? You know what I'm saying? Think about it. I could go two-time. Okay. Mm. 
Nah, we go. Let's go for Yuri. Hopeless. Kiss. Come on. Agonizing. Smile. Unending. Depression. Bed. Pain. Okay. Secretive. Uh, memories. Pleasure. Massacre. Vitality. Broken. Sensation. Oh, I missed climax just now. Cage. Eternity. Destiny. Universe. Uh, fuck all well, these are pretty dog shit. It's never good. Judgment. Alright, dude, fuck it. I, th I think we're still good. I think that's still pretty. I think it's still biased as fuck towards uh, Yuri. Yeah. I don't know if they passed this in the time for a club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here. That's over the past couple of days. It's in the club room. The usual scene greets me. Yeah. Hi, Kwan. Yo, Satori. Sorry to like interrupt, pretty... but I was just watching Faker play League. Why the fuck are you appearing on my screen? Can you just type, put it in chat? Can you just put it in chat here? Just put it in chat. Yeah, good shit. Subscribe to Faker. Yeah, for sure. I'll be the top five of the Fakers. Get the subs and you can get a Quinell. Yeah, there you go, boy. There you go. Get fucked. Got it. That's a weird bug. Happen to me, too. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club. That's all. I see. It's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simplest things with you anyway. Cause you're basic as fuck. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Would you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Oh god, what the fuck? Go to buy a snack with her, bro! What the fuck? Oh no, 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 what have I done? Eh? This is very not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Siori? Eh? Why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. What the fuck? Ah. Uh, Siori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. She turns it upside down and the contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> oh my god! She wanted to use me! She wanted to use me for my money! Oh no, shot! I knew it. I can see right through you, Siori. That's not fair. How do you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. It's either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk. Or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money that I said I'd lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! And so, that only leaves one option. I give up. That made me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Get destroyed. Get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, Yuri laughs. <laughs> eh? I didn't notice she was listening in. Her face is in a book as always. Aha! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Quan to let me borrow some money. That's don't get me involved like that, Satori. 
Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. True. And Frankie, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. What if she's just poor, bro? I mean, she's skinny. She clearly needs food, bro. Ellipsis. Ah. Did I just... I didn't mean that. I just got uh, too absorbed in my book. Ooh. Ah ha ha ha. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. Oh wait, wrong voice. What, you... It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. Yeah, I was gonna say, what the fuck? That. Still, coming from you, Siori. I guess there's a little devil inside of us all, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let it fool you. Siori knows exactly what she's doing. Exactly, she's fake as fuck and just uses people. Just puts on this fake fucking ultra positive demeanor in order to fucking bait people into giving her money. And then she you can just literally apply this formula online. <laughs> Bang, successful streamer. Get a little VTuber model, you get. <laughs> I'm doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even. Wait, after all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But. You wouldn't have to come here if it wasn't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Siori. <laughs> what the fuck? Did I just slap her? Pop! Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Siori in the face and tumbles under the desk. What the fuck? <laughs> Was it me? What just happened? Did I just hit her ass? <laughs> what? Ew! What was it? Eh? A cookie. Sure enough, it was a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sorry glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Hey, 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 hey. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Siori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Siori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. <laughs> Siori clasps her hands over her mouth. What does that even mean? You're clasping? I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going uh, through a lot just over one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Is it two cookies? Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Biggest can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Oh my god, when is they gonna start getting fucking killed by demons or something? When? When? Yeah, why do you think? I gave you that one. Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Here he gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Siori off her. She already suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookies. <laughs> what the fuck is happening right now? Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Siori trots away to safety. Yuri and I just laugh as well. Geez, you're just such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Siori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Oh shit, cause she's getting fucking killed by demons! Uh, Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard, uh... Wait, Yuri's talking to me. Have any of you heard about the, uh... The being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Mmm. 
That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of almost a, wait. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Who says that? Who says that? What the fuck? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. It's so strong-willed. B-b-boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What helped you up anyway? Ah. Well, my last period was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. Aha! <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. The piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah! I don't, really. I just started recently. I always wanted to learn the piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a bit better, I will. Why are they all nervous in front of me, dude? I'm, my guy must have a big dick and be, like, super fucking, like, jacked. Like, I thought I'm some weeb that has bad social skills. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Quan. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, that damn smile. I didn't mean it, uh, any pressure or anything like that. Yeah, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really have the chance to share it once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So did I miss anything? Uh, wait, so I didn't miss anything today? No, not really. Uh, I chose to leave out Siri's mischievous escapade. I'm not sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone already has settled down. Siri some, somehow has already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Oh my god, I'm gonna do the read- am I gonna do the reading thing again? Just fucking- Never mind, not gonna say that. Hey Yuri. Eh? Ah. I suddenly noticed that Yuri's reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no. I was just kind of waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Ah, yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. There's one thing uh, that... <laughs> if there's one thing that can make reading time even better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention, uh, for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and, uh, makes her way to the closet. Is this game, like, edging? Is this, like, edging? It's like, I feel like we're supposed, like, to come at any point, but it's, like, never comes. Like, I'm waiting for something to happen, but nothing ever happens. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't, like, I'm saying metaphorically, I don't mean like, I'm saying like, something massive is gonna happen and the narrative is gonna change massively, like it's not... They started the game off by saying, People with like, fuck, mental can't play this game, warning, it's extremely disturbing, ultra disturbing game, completely fucked game, game's completely fucked. So I'm like, I'm fucking going through this like, filler content, and this weird cringe weep shit of like, having some weird like, thing. Weep simulator where you go into a classroom and there's four fucking anime waifus all thirsting after you, but I'm just waiting for like a demon to come in and start fucking 
just ripping people up and shit, you know? Like, well, like, they're gonna, like, tie me down to a chair and fucking start doing cock and bull torture or something, you know? And, like, teabagging me. I don't know, dude. Like, something's gonna happen, right? I don't know what's gonna happen, dude. I'm just, I'm waiting for something to happen. I feel like something's supposed to happen or it's going to happen, but, like, it's just not happening. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves the small water pitcher from the shelf the can with a can of filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and fetches the electric kettle. I'm going to put this in the uh, teacher's desk and then we'll get to go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. Okay, you're looking at her ass, dude. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> okay, may you hit the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? You're just walking around a fucking classroom! No one talks like this! Yeah. Hmm. Where are you two off to? Eh? We just... Yuri was gonna go make some tea, so... I suddenly realized... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Uh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? Oh, shut the fuck up, Monica! You f get your nose out of this! Clearly... We're doing... Okay, some shit's happening here. She's cock blocking right now. She's that's what she's doing. She's fucking cock blocking. That's Monica. Please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to? T <laughs> or do you want me to tell? Why do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Quan in club activities? <laughs> My mouth gapes. That's not gonna be okay. Never mind. I. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Let's go, Quan. Ah. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Oh, shit, bitch. We're out of the room together, boy. We're out of the water. Oh, dear. Let's go, dude. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How can I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel, feel uh, so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. Oh my, I'm making them all hate each other, bro. I'm ruining this club. I'm like, and I'm destroying this club right now, dude. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Yeah, it's not right for Monica to fucking cock block. Go on. How come even when I do something bad, you're being so nice to me? <laughs> I want to why, dude. Because I want to get my dick away. Uh, nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions. We can't always hide them anyway. Or we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain to a shower into a hurricane. No. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? F friend, you say? <laughs> uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Quang. I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. Felt kind of awkward saying something like that. Okay, this is... She's, you're about to get friend-zoned. If you don't make a move right now. Okay, do you understand, chat? This is... At this point here. Okay, and this... Okay. You need to say something like, We can be more than friends. And then, like, go for a move. Make a play. Go for, go for like... Okay? You need to make a play. Okay? Because you, otherwise, you're going to get indefinitely friend-zoned at this point. This is the this is a point where you need to make a move. But I'm I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah, 
Shall we go? Oh my god, you missed your opportunity, bro! Head six in the hallway right now! What are you doing? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water pen. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Oh my god, bro! Kuhn, do you like a uh, oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. You resist the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really like to do this properly, don't you? Of course. It shouldn't do any, uh, I shouldn't do any less when making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert in tea or anything. Hoo-hoo. What the fuck is that hoo-hoo thing? 200 degrees in there, like giga hot. In that case, you'll be the even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches a teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. What are you linking right now? <laughs> One. <laughs> what the fuck is this, dude? What the fuck is this, dude? No. What the fuck? It's not funny. That's not funny, dude. Okay. Stop. I'll be right back. I need to take a piss. Mods, feel free to take over the stream. I want to be right back. I need coffee, dude. Okay. This game better start ramping. Okay, I swear to God. This game is one of the highest rated games on Steam. It's going to ramp, chat. It's about to get crazy, so get your poke champs ready. Shit's about to go down. Well chat. Cuties, Are, Victorious, Namaz, please report to the closest bus station, or transportation to the re-education campus. Nam 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 Yo, what's the time to beat for this game, by the way? Like, what's the time to beat for this game, by the way? I mean, surely they, I mean, how much contact do they really have? Six hours? 
Five hours. Okay. All right. We've just been in this game. I've committed now. Let's find out. I want to see these get. I want to see some fucking tentacles fucking rip some shit up. Okay, boy. Let's fucking go. Uh, I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided uh, I would uh, try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do when it's uh, you was around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't put yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Kwan. It's very endearing. <laughs> that's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Kwan, I have another request. <laughs> Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? <laughs> Shh. Uh, what's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Jesus. Oh, because she's got massive titties, bro. Because she got big anime titties. This is a common thing. People get breast reductions. Do you know Abby is actually considering a breast reduction because she's getting back pain as well? Uh, yeah. This is like a thing. Straight up. Is that so? I wonder why that is. <laughs> it's most likely because of my... Ah. <laughs> I was right! My, my... Your posture, right? It always turns over while reading. Yes. What? This is so weird, bro. This is the exact dynamic, though, right? You act all like childish and shit, but then you make it like sexual. And like in some kind of like indirect manner. This is the mechanic right now. We're seeing the mechanic in progress right now. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. A bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sierra's candy radar. I take it since uh, it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I sit against the wall. Teacups at our sides. Chocolate makes tea taste disgusting. I've noticed that if you have anything sugary, whenever you're trying to have something, taste something that's not sugary, it makes that thing that's not sugary taste worse. Yeah, it like diminishes the flavor of everything else. As of in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. <laughs> Yuri slides closer and our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was guys kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Go kind of emoji, dude. Yeah. Your teacup. Yuri, Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand is, uh, that's not in the book. I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. It's not need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch your chest. Oh, okay, dude. What? Wait, I'm, what? Wait, how's he not? I'm so confused. How's he gonna not touch, like, oh, it's really hard to not touch your chest because they got massive titties. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She, uh, wears intense... She wears her intense reading expression. I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I guess all of my will to have to focus on reading. I must admit, if I simulate this situation in real life, dude, there's no shot I'd be reading properly. Like, hundred, you're at high school, bro? Sitting next to, like, a immaculate fucking chick with massive titties? Fucking... Okay, no, dude. Like, the dude... You're not concentrating on the book. Ellipsis. After a few minutes, I managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, uh, sorry. I briefly go uh, off the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, it might as well get smudges in all the pages. 
Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I love the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Sad. She's holding the book with both hands. Bro, you... She holds it. Uh, she holds it so that I don't have to have any heart or time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro! Bro! What the fuck? Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. I mean, bro, is she like gonna be near your crotch area? Cause you're gonna have a, f you're gonna be having a full blown erection right now, right? If you're that guy, okay? Is she, but wait, that's what she knows. She's aware of this stuff. She knows, dude. Stand up. I, I'm completely flaccid right now. I swear on my mother. Okay, then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply pots her lips as if the situation was completely natural. Oh my god. What the fuck? She simply pots her lips as if the situation was completely That means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri's lips closed over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs some comfort to confirm what just happened. Um, come on. S sorry. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have done that. I... That's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Oh my god, don't get friends on, homie. Right? I mean... Yeah, what up? Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Oh my god, don't be such a cock! This is how you get friend zone! Dude, that's when you, you had an opportunity again! You've had two opportunities to make a fucking move, bro! And you're just permanently looping in this in this cock circle. Then you don't need to stub or anything. I see. Situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to reading the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus right now. Oh my god, cause she's so fucking okay never mind. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another shelter between my fingers. But this time Yuri's and I my eyes meet. Ellipsis. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I noticed you guys have seen this moat cook is great. Look, I think I like cook more than I like Mark Haley watches fighting people up his monks while they're running over civil and Sasha goes dead. Fighting people is also there too, but then again, Mark Haley watches fighting people up his monks while they're running over civil and Sasha goes. Hey, fighting people is also the fucking laptop losers. Anyone on laptop? Stop. Stop. Nobody asked. We're in the middle of a main part of the story right now. I noticed her chest raising and falling. To the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before Yuri parts her lips. <laughs> you stop talking about parting your lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and I place it in her mouth. I feel the hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! <laughs> what? Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. No, dude. Glenn, you can help Yuri uh, put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Uh, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the tea cups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up. Without so much as a word between us, I get the feeling uh, I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Okay, Yuri. Let's 
Let's see what you've written today. Ellipsis, ellipsis. Yuri stares at the palm with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Quan. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you about the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to give more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. <laughs> Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. What the fuck? She's swallowing cum or something? What is she, do what is she talking about? Yuri prees and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh? Even your close friends? Ellipsis. Yuri doesn't respond to that. Oh, she's got no friends! Oh, fuck off! If you got... Dude. If you have big titties, and an aesthetic face, and you're not fat, okay, automatically she's got a bunch of friends. Okay? No shot. No shot. Like, automatically. I mean, like, like, that's... <laughs> I wonder why. Anyway. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Holy shit. And so... Wait, what... The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was sleeping. Uh, guys. No, while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack, my attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strained tendencies. As an... An order? An ordinary? As a... What... As an or is she saying ordinary? F human. Unordinary human. I can't read it, bro. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequence. Well aware the raccoon is that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing of uh, my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread. My hungry curiosity. The raccoon. An urge. The moon. Increments its face. Oh, 07. And affects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friends. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Oh, is she gonna stab it to death? Is she gonna stab it to death? Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes more hungry and more f frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread. And I feed myself again. What the fuck? Some dark shit, what the fuck would you- What did she th- Yuri, what did she think about doing with that fucking knife, dude? She was like baiting you into thinking she was gonna do some shit. A rush of blood? Um... I was a little bit more daring with, uh, this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's, it's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what the poem is about. That's, that's right. It's a bit closer to my actual preferred writing style. Using my poems as a canvas to express my vivid imaginary. 
imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if you take them at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. Those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So sometimes I enjoy about writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because she's got no friends! Because she's a fucking loser! They're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Quan? I like anime, dude. My character does. Okay, not my answer. Not me. Okay, I, I, to be fair, I don't mind anime, but like... Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best part we can do is respect each other and individual individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're here to be a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There aren't really many people like you, Quan. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I'd be so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. My my character's only listening to it because he... Okay, he's trying... Okay, no mind. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. Just for a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Oh my god! Do I have to listen to all of these ones? Oh! Well, that's what quad has some feelings in it. Oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. Hey, hey. That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm never going to figure out what's good or bad. Uh, but why is that to go back up? If it makes you feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, Ed. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to speed run it, dude. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing uh, you like in, in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, uh, you want me to write... Wait, well, you want me to write something for me? It's so sweet. Yeah, right. Wait, what did I just say? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Oh, but you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up hurting someone at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes I like a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? Happy and sad? A bipolar? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can see why you like something sad. Oh, wait, I, can, I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad punk can give me the rain cloud a little hug. Make a nice little happy rainbow. Oh, shut the fuck up. You're so fucking fake. Satori, that was unexpectedly poetic. No, it wasn't. It was fucking cringe. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting bitter explicit my feelings after all. Thanks, Quan. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now then, okay? Okay. Oh my god, I have to read this whole fucking thing. It's gonna be so cringe. Bottles. I pop off my... Gelp. What the fuck? I pop off my scalp with a lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like bumbles of kittens. I reach, I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me uh, lots of friends. Each bottle a 
starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. <laughs> Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. <laughs> digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. What the fuck? I blow the dust off my bottle caps. And it doesn't feel like time elapsed. I empty my shelf. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up. And in come my friends. Uh, guys. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf. One after the other. Holding them out for each every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters in between my feet. Oh, Jesus Christ. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. And shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my friends. They're friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Jesus Christ! What the fuck, Sayori? So wait, she tries to please everyone? As this happy person? But she eventually runs out of energy. And then the friendships shatter. Because they, they take and they take and they take it to the point where they can't take anymore. And they no longer like her. Is that what's happening? That's the way I get from it anyway. Oh shit, dude. Holy crap. Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best bond ever? So she's actually deep as fuck and she's not just like a super like two head? And she just pretends to act like a two head? Is that what's happening, dude? Jesus. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect like something like this to come from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I mean, uh, I'm really touched my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe uh, I'm used to you being so cheerful. Well, she was one-dimensional, wasn't she? She was a one-dimensional character for the entire fucking game, and now she's like randomly like fucking I don't know what the fuck's happening. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like it was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Haha, <laughs> don't get out of yourself. Saturia's always in the habit of getting obsessed with something. Before dropping it, and more longer than a week later. Yo, that's what Abby does, dude! Holy shit! This, this is the mechanic. <laughs> Not all the time, but like... <laughs> I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Yo, true. That's the exact feeling I get with Abby as well. That's the exact feeling. It's the same mechanic. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It's like extreme passion. But then she loses interest eventually. We'll see. I want to see how long the bird arc lasts for. I'm, I'm interested. The bird arc. The fucking hatching a thousand bird arc. Like, I don't even know. Yeah, she's on the bird arc right now, so we'll see. Okay. <laughs> well, I can admit uh, it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh, what do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be deep sounding to express something. It's going to be, uh... It's going to just sound like something you're forcing unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're at Yuri's level. That's when he stops short all of a sudden. Don't tell oh me. Oh my god, who the hell cares? 
Hey eh, eh, champ, eh. please end me. You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? <laughs> Yo, GC through my shit, bro. What are you talking about? Hey, keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of stuff. This angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I... I mean... Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you! Naisuke shoves the palm I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid palm if you wrote it for someone else. Just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what you, uh, I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Dude, what the fuck happens? Does this actually turn into some weird pedo game if you fucking try and impress the little fucking girl? Like, what even happens? This is so weird. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Yeah, if you didn't, you'd be fucking worried. Monica, at least Monica's short and sweet. She just, she just shuts the fuck up real quick. Hi, Yenquan. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh -huh. I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for me today? She's like the teacher. This is the this is the fucking teacher archetype. This is like the this is like that the, you know that chick in Naruto with, who like just kills people with her fucking pinky finger and she's got massive titties. She's like the she's the mommy. She's like the yeah the one yeah she's that one. Tsunandrei. Yeah, that's her. Um. Let me share what I wrote for you today. Sure, here you go. I give my phone to Monica. Ellipsis. All right, this one is good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but if you mean finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style, hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. But when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside of her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes inside that mind of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she uh, didn't keep to herself so much. But still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Oh, shit. They all know, bro. They all know, bro. Oh, fuck. Huh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down. I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Oh shit, am I gonna go full intel arc here? Oh my god, what if my guy fucking comes and shoots them all or something? What if I'm the demon? What I'm waiting for demons to attack us or them to attack me? What if I'm the one? What if it turns out that I'm the fucking incel? Yeah, fictional one anyway. <laughs> Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. Just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh well. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want me to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. Well, the anime girls are depressed, dude. They're fucking depressed, dude. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sign. Cassine. Tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. 
the fuck does that mean in the end? Load me. What does load me mean, dude? Load me with what does she mean? What does she want to be loaded with? I don't understand. Okay, I don't really understand that one. She's just depressed or something. Hmm. Is everyone more abstract? It's even more abstract than your last winner. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. So if you don't like it, I know I never said that. Just a uh, kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of, uh, I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. Still have me to tell what it's about though. Ah, ha ha ha. Sometimes uh, asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression or a feeling. Holy shit. Holy shit, what is this, dude? Quintanius. I am Quintanius, the tarnished, naked slayer of the most challenging foes who stands before me. I am Elena, the Blade of Mequila. I, who we can get along despite the infectiousness of my scarlet rot. Oh, it's <laughs> oh shit, Nixia made some fucking batches work right there, dude. <laughs> oh, goddamn. Some good artwork, man. Um, okay, yeah. Jesus Christ. Fuck, okay, I'm not a Kuma chat. We're not Kumas. Okay, this is just funny. Okay, or, uh, or a conversation with the reader. So, putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Did she just break the fucking the fourth wall or some shit? What the fuck? Wait, what? It's like I'm in the Matrix. Wait, you know how to do that? What? You never know when you might change your mind. And when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Am I in the fucking Matrix? Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone can come and sit out the front of the room. Is it about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put anything together good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I really don't do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We gotta keep it simple, okay? We won't need much uh, more than a few decorations. Sierra has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, I'm that's great and all. Yo, cheer, brother. Let's go with the Twitch Prime stuff. But it doesn't tell us uh, what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. What? Performing? P uh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose the poem during to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Siori's putting it on the uh, posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Siori, <laughs> who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. 
Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't already stop putting these potions up, did you? Yeah, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's probably, uh, it's, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud in, the, in front of a room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. Are you that dumb? Monica, are you that fucking stupid? They're, she's like fucking... They're all like depressed introverts, a part of a fucking literature club. And you think they're just going to go up and do public speaking? What are you, fucking slow on the head? Fucking Monica, get your shit together. So I'm sorry. Ellipsis. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event uh, and each put on a good performance, then we'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And uh, those reasons that we're all in this club today. So you want to share that with others? To inspire? And sign the same feelings? Can the demons come and start fucking killing them already? Holy fuck! It's like, you know, there's like in Dragon Ball Z, there's like filler episodes before something happens. It's like there's an infinite filler episode. And it's just net unending. To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all, uh, and if all it takes is standing in front of a room with two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Ellipsis. Ellipsis. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. Giga Chan, dude. I think Sayori and Monica have been really trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't Who have any... Who tricked this clip. rat into reading class lol? Bro, I have no idea. I just... I, 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 the reason I clicked it is because it's one of the highest rated games of all time. And I had never heard of it until, like, why well, I'd heard of it. I heard that this game would make people kill themselves or something. But then I don't know if that was just weird PR propaganda. And, I, and it's actually just a meme. Uh, okay, fine. I mean, I am. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Ellipsis. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I'll do it. I don't really have a choice. Oh, uh, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, is that like a is that like a prelude? She said that a couple times now. Like this is gonna she's gonna die, and that's gonna be the death of her. Is this like a is this like um is this like a hint as to what's gonna happen? But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want to ask you to chew on a pearl of yours. They're going to be practicing reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no way, Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. I don't understand. How do you do this? <laughs> what is that like? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook after the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She stands behind the podium. The title, is, the title of the poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> I'm 
Monica begins reciting a poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. This is something she's done before, or she's simply a natural. I glance around. Me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes her recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Ah, oh, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Satori? Yuri says, uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks over quickly to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens next when Yuri gets absorbed into her... Well, it's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words... <laughs> her quivering words transform into a sh- the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. <laughs> the poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation, because I'm a giga chat. All right, I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins in afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. Um, it's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were so caught off guard, but what? But we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the palm to her chest, and she rushes back to her seat. It's like that, no, she's doing that. You know the anime girl run where they do that, like, nervous run? Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Ellipsis. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Satori hops out out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Ha. Ha 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 ha. Sorry, I giggled. (laughs) Satori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think like you're reciting, reciting it to other people. Imagine you were setting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Satori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice... Wait, somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Satori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I would probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come out of Satori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe, uh, maybe this is what Satori meant when she says she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Satori finishes and we applaud. Poggies. I did it! Good job, Satori. <laughs> Even Quan liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Satori. Oh, fuck. It came out nicely, Satori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. Uh, But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Yeah? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little bit more force from behind them, depending on what you're reading. 
Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hee hee hee. Now next time, I'm gonna make you pick a bomb that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Quan. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Quan lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Jesus Christ. Natsuki's toxic, bro. Might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of whatever to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Oh my god! <laughs> oh shit, they're all staring, dude. Holy shit. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in He's your writing. He's of rock. Something like that, bro. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. I just leave you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of his seat and makes her way to the podium. Natsuki's poem is called. It's called. Where, where, where are you looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem's called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. That's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as it's giving off life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel you prepared enough to recite the poem in front of other people? I mean, I'm doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Wait, she's gonna be fake as fuck to other people? That's a surprise, this is that's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it'd be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much Doki to worry Doki about for the game, uh, smile. That's it. I want everyone to... Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming up, though. Might be hard, but I hope that uh, you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a palm and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so... Uh... Let me know ahead of time what you're going to be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. Doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah. No problem. Okay, everyone. I think it's about to, uh, that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. Jeez, not another, another poem! It's been working out really nicely so far, and I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we're finished planning tomorrow, and then we'll uh, have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Satori or Monica. I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. <laughs> you don't even care about the club. You're only here to get laid, bro. And impressing Monica. Then I, have to I do don't my best. know if it's lack of sleep for last two or three days or your skills voicing this tale, but I'm falling asleep here on the desk. No joke. Dude, fuck you. Fuck you, honestly. You're so annoying. You're so annoying. Didn't we ban him? I'm sure we banned you. Why can't I fucking find... Why your name so dog shit, bro? I can't even fucking type your dog shit name into ban you, dude. 
but I'm sure we ban you. Okay. Fucking Puma, this clown, if he keeps making dog shit cringe donations. What dog shit cringe out of touch donations. Okay. Alright, there we go. Let's go put that on there. Um, Alright. Okay. Actually, you know what? And also, let's ban him for 24 hours as well. Just get him rid of it. Just get him out of here. Just get him out of here. Okay, let's continue. Ready to go, Satori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little bit nice, though. Well... Uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Quan. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. What the fuck is this shit, dude? I walk, I walk home with Sari once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sari is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sari. Ellipsis. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to. I mean. Siri fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asked you to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh shit, bro! What the fuck? I think we just lie to her. Well, let's hit save. Let's hit save. I think we just lie to her and say I would still walk home with Satori. But actually, I wouldn't. I'd fucking be like... If, well, what I would do is I would just walk home with Yuri. Without Satori knowing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna go with this one. I would still walk home with you. Don't worry about it. Satori. You think I would really ditch you for Yuri? Oh, this is so manipulative and evil. I can't do it. Nah, I'm gonna tell her straight up. I, let's be honest here. I would. Ah! I, oh! It's so fuck. I wouldn't do that in real life. I would just tell her straight up, dude. Like I'll be. I'll it's be honest. It's been with great that. seeing you really get into these weeb games. Quick. I don't know, dude. Ah, yeah, yeah. This is hard. Let's be honest. In real life, what I would do is I would determine which one is cooler than the other one, and I would pick one, and I would deep dick for that one. But the fact is, I've been friends with this person for my entire life, so I'm already friend zoned anyway. So I'm just gonna tell her I'm gonna walk home with Yuri. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna tell her straight up, Yuri. Let's be honest here, because I'm not friend zoned with Yuri. I'm not friend zoned with Yuri. I will walk home with Yuri. Walking home with Yuri. Huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I'd feel awful turning her down, so. Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you just admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Okay, dude. You were literally feeding her chocolates. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is there replacing for you. Hmm. If you say so. What the fuck? What the fuck? Conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. True. 
But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to see it. Uh, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Oh shit, bitch. Okay, should I? These girls are all so grumpy. They would never be this upset if they have had a nice big serving of Italian pasta, just like Nonna used to make. They need a something more feeling than you can give them, Queen, you little rigatoni. I'll see your cooking. Mortacci tua. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, do I want- I kinda wanna impress my- my next door neighbor, you know, a little bit, but nah, we'll just commit full Yuri build. We're going full Yuri build. Okay, we're going full Yuri build. We make- we're deep digging Yuri. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna go, uh... Fuck. Breathe. It's good. Climax. Unrestrained. Death. Dark. Depression. Raindrops. Horror. Contamination, eternity, melancholy, incongruent, disoriented, lust, infallible. Swimsuit. Passion. Misfortune. Grief. Okay, there we go. That's good. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. Oh, don't worry. I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Uh -huh. You must have a lot of determination. Starting with this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not just de not determination, but I guess passion. Remember, the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy you are all willing to help out for the festival too. You cannot wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. <laughs> but it's the whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Satori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh, yeah, I didn't say that I don't like it. Besides, squid is disgusting. Besides, what do you mean by <laughs> you of all people? <laughs> because it's right in your name. Squid? What? Bon Ika. What? Hey? <laughs> That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Oh. Uh, <laughs> how come she's... How does Monica know? She's being translated. How is she so aware? What the fuck? Stop doing that. Seriously. She knows that she's being translated, bro. Monica's pretty based. Huh? Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our event for now, okay? Hee hee hee. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Satori's anyways. Excuse me? Uh, where is Satori anyway? Oh, there you are. Satori is sitting at a desk in the corner room looking down at nothing. Oh, Sage. I will go over to her. Hey, Siori. I have... My hand in front of her face. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? He's spacing out again. Uh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Everything all right? Of course. I was like, uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. It's fine, see? Siri shows me a big smile. That's a fake smile, dude. What the fuck? What's wrong with her? 
Time to meet distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glanced at Siri before turning back towards everyone else. She's not okay, bro! She's not okay! Help her! But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone at the back of the usual activities. Oh, this is sad. This is actually sad, bro. Well, you shouldn't have friendzoned him so hard, bro. Okay? Now she's sad as fuck. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, shuffling through some papers at her desk. Go on, what's up? It might sound a little bit strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who's idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm uh, not the one asking. But I'm, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Quan. You certainly know her not better than I do. Yeah, but she's not ever really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, I went and asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I care about her well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Oh, shit. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Quan. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... See, Terry talks about you more than anything else, you know. Huh? She's been much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Siri is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different to how it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Kwan. Oh my god, so I'm the thing that makes her happy, dude! Oh shit, what the fuck have I done, dude? I just want to load back, bro. I just want to load back and say, fuck Yuri, dude. And say, fuck Yuri. Oh, but then wait. If I do that, then Yuri's going to be depressed. There's no winning. There's no winning here. How about one of them just commit, bro, earlier? It's because I'm so soy. Do you know what is happening? I'm leading them on. It's like when a chick leads on like three dudes at the same time. Just and no one wins. You, like you, you, there's no winning here. It's like except I, I'm doing it, bro. I'm leading on like I'm leading on multiple chicks simultaneously, apparently, without actually committing. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as? Wait, have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because you're, uh, because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ellipsis. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayatori's sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Siri and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet, I can't hear them from here. I sigh and sit down myself. I know Satori told me not to worry about it and have fun with everyone else. I mean, dude. This is some relatable shit, bro. This is some relatable shit, bro. This is like you can't please everyone. And you have to make a choice. This is this is real life, bro. This is this is real life. This is actual some real life shit, man. But it's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. 
exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting uh, this weigh me down so much. It's a realistic game, bro. Like, this is, this is, this is like, very similar sh a situation happened to me in high school. So, I mean, I'm just saying. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room, suddenly Yuri peering from the, over a book. But she looks away quickly with a flustered look on her face. I'd rather she won't get anywhere like this. I've never seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. But now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit on the one next to her own ellipsis. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell what I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. Uh, so it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was uh, staring or anything. I didn't want to be creepy like that. In any case, oh wait, in any case, uh, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I uh, caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. No one talks like this. Of course, there are certainly those who find most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. I do? No way, you talk like this? No one talks like that, bro! You're telling me you've said a line that says that your troubles are the only concern of those who willingly share in that concern? You say that. It's such a convoluted way of saying, like, like, I care about, you know, like, you if you care about someone, then you, you know, you talk to them. Right, like, it's like, it's fucking weird, bro. It's fucking, no one takes it. I think it's translation, bro. It's translation that's fucked in. Ah, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I was just feeling a bit of uneasy about Siori. Siori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Eh? Huh? S sorry I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just wanted to... Mi I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Siori and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, you see. Then perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. You're being weird about it, bro, at this point. You're talking about it to everyone. She was, Maybe she's having a bad day. Okay. She just had, like, lack of sleep because her parents were arguing or something at night. Like, you know? Quan, the world is full of meaning, often hidden beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you uh, may know them. Ah. So you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Siri is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going inside of her head. And she may not always know what she wants. Why do people do that, bro? Why do people act fake as fuck? Why do people do that? Why do people put on, like, this facade? Like, where, like, like they completely change person. It's like my sister, bro, when I see her interacting with, like, 90% of people. She changes to like this high-pitched, overly happy voice, and acts completely different. She'll be like, you literally yelling at me, you, what? yelling at me, like I mean, fucking going crazy, just fully aggro. And then she'll answer the phone. She'll be like, "Hello, yeah, that's me speaking. How you doing today? Oh my god!" And it's like, and then she'll put it, and then she'll completely change again. And it's like, what's even happening? Like, why is this even a thing? That's normal? I don't get it. If you depress and, and be honest about it, you just make it a downer to people. Mm. I guess. 
Ah, well, you just act depressed. If I'm having a shit day, I wake up and just have a shit day. And I'm like, like, I was like, yeah, fuck you. But then if I'm having a good, but then again, I'm not, on average, I'm having a pretty good day. I, I'm, my default setting is having, my default setting is like having a pretty good day, unless like shit's off. You know? I just noticed the strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts. Wasn't she? Wait, what? But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, didn't she? Ah, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. You know, it's more like a daughter thing, you know? Like, a, you know, I'm looking after a kid kind of thing. It's less like a girlfriend kind of thing, okay? Don't worry, all right? We're just good friends, that's all. Yeah, we're just good friends, exactly. Not that I'm saying, dude! We're just, like, dude, that's what I'm telling you. Like, you know, it's more like a... Yeah, we're just friends. Ellipsis. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes. A person's mysteries are untold, even to themselves. And you, as someone who's honest and caring... Man, cover feelings you weren't aware in, aware in you. Okay, no one is this deep in high school, bro. Like, no one is this deep in high school, bro. That is... That's... That's is... I think that... She would be very... Uh, she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri. You're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. I'm literally here to bang some chicks. <laughs> and she's like transposing all this ultra deep shit onto me, bro. Like, holy fuck. I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah. That's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we get to do some reading? Well... As long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing any, uh, anyway. Okay, here we go. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our palms now? Fuck me. I fucking hate this part, bro. But right now, everything's back to normal. Everyone receives their palms, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Siori. Yuri first. Ellipsis, Quan. Your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can only feel the emo- I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't even, uh... I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri. That's the wrong way to put it. Hey guys, did you know that in terms of male, human, and female Pokemon breeding, Vaporeon is the most okay. compatible We've Pokemon for humans? Due to their mostly water-based biology, there's no doubt okay. in my- Okay, yes, they're incredibly wet. Okay, when they're aroused, whatever, dude. Okay. Um... This never did come to me, and uh, this never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much because <laughs> thanks to you! Oh my god, such a cook! <laughs> You're really the example I was chasing after! Is that so? You gently smiled. Dan finally want and beat Elden Holes. Now we're going to have variety streams and react content. The coming weeks are going to be cozy as frick. Quinl. This feeling. I'm so glad when I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought I would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe you're so good! It's something you've never even shared with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not really like I had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Yuri smiles sadly. You never have any friends! Everybody hates her! Go on. During lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. 
Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make you really a good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. Oh, fuck off! They're gonna be literally jealous of your body type! Are you kidding me? Okay, bro! Every chick that's like that is a, gets ultra big headed about how good their body type is. It's like, I've never seen a nervous, like, have you ever, have you ever seen someone who's got like a, the body type B? Okay, like that type of, okay, and then they've not had like a, like they know they're fucking sexy. They always, they know, they know it. They're fucking aware. I've never met one that's not aware. And... Maybe those friends were attacking her because they were jealous. Maybe her friends were jealous. And they don't hate me for acting like a know it all. People said that. Well, people said that about you. I'm not a know it all, Quan. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all of these feelings. And I can do them. All I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what I was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. Quint, yikes. No. That's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Quan. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. Mate, I have pandered to your every fucking will. I've literally been a cuck and a slave to everything. Just agreed with everything she's ever said and just said she's amazing constantly. I'm a literal yes man cuck. But okay. You always treat me just like anyone else. Okay. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. <laughs> oh, true. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. No, you didn't! You got forced to come here because you felt bad, and then you were like, wait, maybe I could have sex with one of these cute girls. And then they just stayed, bro. Oh my god. And I said, and I would say I've had one of the least, at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really have friends now, aren't we? No! You say, now nah, this is what you reply. We're more than friends, Yuri. And you go, go in for the kiss. Do it. Don't be a pussy. Do it. Do it. Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want me to show me your poem? Yeah. I do. Let me get it for you. Oh shit, here we go. Oh shit. Advocating harassment? Okay, dude. Ghost under the light part two. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. In the distance, a blue green light flickers. A cone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the airy glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella as a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I'm too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and I drop my umbrella. The light flickers 
My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the arm of amber light flickering against my outstretched arm. Wait, the only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding. I laugh. My understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to understand this. So she is the light? I don't understand this one. I like the emo one. WTFF. What is this? These are, these are, these things are abominations. Okay. Why are their eyes so big? How come they have such large breasts? Considering how like uh skinny they are, doesn't make any sense. These are these are, these things are. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. All right. I'll save that for later. Okay, we're gonna save that for later. Finishing the bomb, I start to hand it back to Yuri, but instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Ellipsis. Do you dislike it? Ah, no. Of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite your response usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what was this one was about. Wait, is she saying she loves me, dude? I, I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. It's what? I understood our previous ones, and this one is like... Okay, what is this now? <laughs> okay, dude! That is not even funny. That's toxic. Yuri's having a harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared this with me. So thank you. Why am I adding so cringe and weird, bro? Like, and I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the pollen back to her. Instead, Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response to a warm touch. Hey, goo -goo. Set playback speed to 1.5x. Fuck up. Thanks, Gugu. I hesitate in response with a warm touch. You can. Uh, the poem is, once again, Yuri fails to complete a sentence. Imagine that, dude, if you're writing poems to each other. Romantic poems to each other. Wait, I think I did that at school one time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I actually did write a letter. I think I actually did. I think I, I think I actually did that actually. No, I actually did that. I actually did that. It wasn't a poem though. Wait, maybe it was a poem. Almost two years goes. Not a fake story. No, no, no. I genuinely wrote it on a piece of paper and everything. No, I it was. It, I used one of these like scented birthday cards, like the, you know, like one of those like scented papers. Unironically, yeah. Uh, that I, actually, that I actually did that, and I even I, and I folded it up. Yeah, I remember now. I folded it up in an origami, in an origami uh, envelope. Like you basically, I wrote it and then folded it up. I remember. I think she like laughed. I think she straight up was like, but then she was like, oh, that's nice. But uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I straight up don't even know if she like. <laughs> I straight up don't even know. She just went around and showed it to her friends and was like, yeah, look how fuck this is. Well, I don't... I, I can't. But... It, I mean, it kind of worked, so... I mean, it is what it is. I'm not going into details yet. But I unironically did write a poem. No, I actually... I was like, imagine writing a poem to someone, and I was like, wait, I actually did that. <laughs> and I'm like, the... I, yeah. It works. I don't know why I did that, though. I guess I don't know. Maybe I saw it on a TV show or something and thought it was a good idea. 
But the joke's on her. Because I just Googled a poem. And they just changed a few words. So it actually didn't come. So so the, so the joke's actually on her. It was actually fake as fuck. Okay. So get fucked. <laughs> I did. I, I Googled it and changed a few words. And then wrote it down. Okay. I plagiarized it. It wasn't like some... So like whenever she like dismissed it. That's probably why I'm not like mentally destroyed from it. That'd be fucked up if you actually made your own poem. And then the person you gave it to laughed at you. But holy shit. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri finally smiles. As if she doesn't want me to notice. You always... You always make me feel nice. Oh my god. <laughs> I know I'm not good with people, but... I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. What? Wait, she wants to make me feel nice? Is that what she just said? Wait, she wants to return the favor? Oh, shit. Oh, It'd be trigger fire that's bugged out. What the fuck? One sec, let me fix it. I'm gonna have to turn the meme layer randomly. Oh, I can turn the meme layer. That'd be, that'd be trigger fire that's bugged out last time. I don't know what it is, dude. Quinbot flashbang. Quinbot flashbang. Okay, fakes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I think you did a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. Um, but I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put a bomb away. Wait, you gotta show your palm to other people. Okay, let's go to... Let's do Siori next. Ellipsis. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on. I can already tell you don't like it. She's gonna say, yeah, it's... It's too... She say, she's gonna say something like, I'm pandering towards Yuri. You don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write for this one for anyone specifically. Oh, shut the fuck up, cunt. Yes, you did. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. She just said, though, this has turned into some fucking love club. It's not even like a fucking... This is a dating simulator. This isn't even a fucking, um... <laughs> this isn't even about, like, literature anymore. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends. Just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Quan. Siori. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. See, Ori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Siori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Oh, fucking despair, boys. Holy shit, you just left, bro? Holy fuck. This is brutal, man. This is bringing back high school memories, bro. I'm like, I'm getting high school memories back. This is fucking traumatic. This is traumatic. You can't win, bro. It's like you want to please everyone, but you can't. Okay, you can't. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, did you even... Next! Oh, shit! They know! They're on to me, bro! They're on to me! They're straight up on to me, bro. Hi, Quan. Have you thought about what you uh, want to submit? 
to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people. I'll just have to give it more thought. Okay, no pressure. Uh, but whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Aha! Anyway, let's take a look at the palm. Sure. Let Monica, Monica take the palm. Uh, I'm holding it in my hands. Ellipsis. Your style's got to a fine one. Yuri seems to be teaching me a lot of things, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah, she's going to be teaching me some more shit soon, okay? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been uh, noticing how much time you spend with her. I've uh, heard you say more words these past days. Wait, I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. I'm not sure how you did it, but it's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Eh, uh, that's... <laughs> that's awfully suspicious. That's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well... I just feel bad she's had a hard time socializing. <laughs> I'm coming, I am. <laughs> oh, that's, they all know, bro. They all know, bro. They all know. It makes me want to, uh, it makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know? Alright, alright. I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't, uh, used to opening up her, wait, I, I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, that could be really hard for her. A book down a total escape from reality. Just a bandage. You say that like I'm gonna hurt her. So that's good that she's looking out for our girl. That's good, she's threatening. That's good she's looking out for her girl though. That's badass. She's like, she's basically saying, you better, you better not fuck with her. Okay. Sorry, I really didn't, I, I, I didn't really mean that. But anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway. I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. The beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning. All purpose. And all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather. Lost adrift the sky. Victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. The twilight? It's a different word that I've never seen before. Nobody knows. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I fall, and I fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we all seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Oh, shit! Bro, it's pretty deep, bro, it's pretty deep, bro. It's, I mean, it's kind of right, though. What would be the point of existing if you knew everything, anyway? You know? It's kind of cool to be, like, an ignorant fool. Getting, going with the breeze. You know? Just going where the wind takes you. Okay. You know, 
I feel like learning and looking for the answers are the sorts of things that gave life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, uh, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. Okay, there is no shot that like 17 year old and fucking 15 year old girls are writing this shit, dude, okay? Alright, there's no shot. Alright, there's like, what is happening here? Okay, yeah, alright, okay, dude. I never really put much meaning or thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because uh, if we all had the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? Yep. You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Well, th th this is like a this is one of the like great filters. It's like what happens whenever uh, like you, get, you there's like a singularity event where the machine grows exponentially to the point where it understands everything, realizes everything's pointless, and then immediately shuts off. And that's what we see in our aliens. Because they all get to this exponential information growth, and they figure out everything, and realize it's all pointless. And literally just turn off and disable. And that's why we don't see any aliens. What the fuck? Yeah, that's what, and this is what a poem's about, dude. It's why, it's why, uh, it's why, uh, do you know what it is? It's like, uh, when people, it's like, it's like having a purpose it means you don't become depressed. But then if you, like, it's why, it's why lots of rich, really spoiled, privileged people get ultra depressed. Because they lack purpose. Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are t uh, aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, uh, yeah, that. Anyway. What?! Something as moniker an alien?! She keeps fucking saying weird shit. She's broken the fourth wall like three times now, and she's like... She's... She... I don't know if she's an alien lizard person living- Like, I don't know what the fuck's about to happen, dude. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day! Are you ever too shy to uh, share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put too much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because of just instead of telling, uh... uh because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay or bad, they want to focus on everything that went into it and the things that you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little, uh, little literature club. Don't you think? That's my advice for today. Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening. To be fair, Monica's the best wife of me, actually. Like, even though I'm going for, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, you know, I'm one of those, what do they call that shit? Aim high, shoot low. Like, you don't, you don't go for Monica, okay? Yuri was already digging my shit, and we were kind of already in, so we kind of just shooting our shot, you know? All right, but I, she's, I think Monica's the most based out of all of them. Monica's the most based out of all of them. Um, uh, okay, you there. Oh, you three. We aren't done sharing our poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Did you catch race? I don't have a catch race. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is con foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh, shit, what the fuck? In your books, maybe. 
Look, the only thing different is that Satori isn't here. <sighs> it seems you're right. <sighs> Satori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is just thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. <laughs> Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, she wasn't feeling too well and actually went home early. Is that so? Hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the best time she's... Wait, well, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Oh, shit, bro. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Satori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? A curious expression coming from you, Yuri. Of all people. <laughs> you know what you did! You know what you did, Yuri! You know what you did with those big titties! Calm down, guys. I talked with her earlier. Everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone uh, will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing! That's right. It's like you were making cupcakes. Well, we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that uh, by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the party pamphlets. So Dory will be helping me design them. As for you, Yuri. Yuri, you can... What, make tea? Uh... uh guys... Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. Oh shit! Oh shit, dude! Okay. Yeah, no, uh, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person there, you know. Natsuki does an ellipsis. Now, Natsuki's pounding too? Jeez, ah, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Satori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if, uh, uh but. If I can't also be the leader of my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting. Your handwriting is terrible. You have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set up the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk and focuses and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Quan. The one who's truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. And uh, it would probably go a long way if you give one of them a hand. You could always uh, help me out as well. I'd be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Mona's just suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they gonna respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if I... Okay, well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice. You shouldn't be sitting in your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would uh, like to handle the baking on your own. Oh my god, are they really gonna fight over me now, boys? Quan uh, may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited for assisting with my decorations. Hold on, I never said that! How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Quan to... What are you saying? It would be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't... 
J just what do you think? Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Quan to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in. You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Quan, you're okay with this, right? What, you saying pick a waifu, dude? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh. Okay. So. What I could do. Is we could go Yuri and just continue the deep deck strategy. Right? Because we've been working on Yuri the entire time. But thinking, we could also go Monica, because she's actually the Giga Chad, and maybe we could maybe we can make something happen. But then again, Satori is like at home crying and depressed and shit, and I should probably just go say hello to her. I mean, that's what I should do, right? I should say she's feeling bad, and I should go check on her. That's what because I'm a, I, I've been a friend the entire life, right? I've been a friend the entire like, bro. That's what I should do. Even if I am trying to deep dick Yuri. It doesn't matter. That's what a good friend would do. You, you, What do they say? Bros before hoes. That's what they say. They say bros before hoes. And she, yeah, she is a girl, but it's still a bro. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's go with this one. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I'd prefer to Tori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said... Monica said... Uh, Monica said that Tori was... Helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Are you gonna make. Really? I didn't save. You're right. Okay, you're right. Save. Okay, I'm gonna go. Let's go, Yuri, then. Fuck it. Well, I'm probably the most useful helping out Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you. Natsuki. I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No. I was just saying, ugh. So you're helping Yuri then, Quan? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have, a, I have a habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. It's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would, so fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. She's fucking 12, bro. Like, I'm not gonna go around to some 12 year old's house and help her cook. It'd be fucking weird, bro. Uh. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word. <laughs> but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Quan? Me? Yeah, I guess you could say I'm interested in see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, you, Natsuki? Mm. Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no. That's not what we meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Quan picked me. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. And also... Your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And uh, nothing that I can do for the aim will even compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Uh... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not a very good... F never good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are taken back by Yuri's words. When she was already has trouble with words, she's trying to cheer someone up. Must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri's trying to sound like Siori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Siori would say in a time like this. 
because Siri always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. True. Big true. No. I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. Hmm? You better... You, you better bet my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So, today, so uh, I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's go out here then. Oh, so I get to walk home with Yuri now? I start to follow Monica and Netsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, eh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Oh, shit, bitch! Oh, shit, bitch! Alright then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by uh, your house on Sunday. My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought I'd be the one going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I prefer to go to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided to press you for no reason. I mean, she's probably from a troubled home. Right? It's not like it should matter much either way. I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I can manage making myself useful in some way. I'm not really as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Quan. I think we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? Ellipsis. I don't know. It's just difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me! Oh, it's because of your massive titties! You're forgetting the one reason the most. Uh, you're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose you because that's what I want to do. But, but. Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. I just. You, you wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Oh, shut the fuck up. You have a hidden agenda. You've been planning this from the beginning. Just tell her, bro. Do you believe me? I. Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight in my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took a tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. Ah, I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out of the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. I hope that the other, like, the other wife is okay. I hope that she isn't actually a secret manic depressive. And she's like, like, I don't know, fucking cutting herself or some shit. I can't believe this. Yuri is coming to my house on this, on Sunday. Even though I would, uh, I preferred to do this with Siori. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. <laughs> <laughs> she even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. <laughs> Shaking my head, dude. Why do I feel nervous that Siori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. I just go with it. Then I have a good time. Okay. It's already Sunday. I've been increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and is also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit. It's just the two of us. Meanwhile, We've been uh, texting occasionally. She is. Uh, she was extremely apprehensive at first, but I wasn't long before I was already learned more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing since Yuri since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything. But I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Yuri said and Monica said, 
Is it really okay for me to put Sari's feelings aside when she might need me? Oh shit, dude. Oh shit, dude. Okay, what the fuck, dude? Oh shit. Oh shit. Yo, I need to be right back. Take a best I'll put a song on for you guys. I gotta bear back. I'll bear back one sec. I'll bear back. She's gonna be so sad, dude. I'm, I'm, yo, I'm right back. What is wrong with you? Okay. All right, I'm back. All right, let's find out what the fuck happens here. Let's find out what happens here, boys. Okay, so she's gonna be, she's clearly in love with me, dude, and um, and now she's gonna be like ultra sad, like Omega Sage. Um. Okay. Rather than simply asking, I I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Uh, once I reach Satori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play uh, so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses, like we're family. The house is quiet. Satori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her to not run down and greet me. Yo, what the fuck? And it's a bedroom where I finally find her. Is it Tori? No, oh, thank God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Holy fuck, dude. Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Bye, Gwen. I sit down in her room. Tori forces a smile. See, you tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. Oh shit, what the fuck? You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not really much change, has it? So Terry's room is messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I was cleaning it up for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Are you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Terry had already left by the time we decided 
It was the last, uh, by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't need to plan uh, to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. The Tori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just want to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Satori smiles, shaking her head. It's not good, Quan. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. I, if I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings. If I didn't make that stupid mistake. Then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. What the fuck? Jesus Christ, what did her parents teach her, dude? What the fuck did her parents do? They fucking violated this kid. I think that's why the world decided to have you Thank come you, over Ms. today. Thank you, Missing Quarter, for gifting Sayori a subscription. He just wants to torture me. <laughs> Satori! I grab Satori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh. <laughs> Satori gives me an empty smile. Ah, oh, fucking hell, Sag. You really put me in a trap, Quan. But. You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Oh, shit, bro. What the fuck, bro? Seeing what? What are you talking about, Satori? <laughs> it's because she's only happy around me. And then and then by herself, she's actually just fucking depressed. You're really just going to make me sad, aren't you, Quan? Oh, fuck, dude. Just be a girlfriend, pussy. Fuck Yuri, dude. She's just got big titties, man. I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I know, when I, when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy into caring to waste by having them spend time on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I want to make everyone happy. That's what, well, that's what they say, right? Like, uh, all the best comedians and stuff have, like, a really fucked, um, upbringing. Because they have to make their, like, bad situations better because they're, like, mom's dying of cancer or, like, a family member is suffering, like, immensely. Right? And that's, and that's literally, that's literally the case, though. You, it's like Robin Williams, for example. Yeah, a lot of depressed people do this. It's actually true as fuck. Without anyone worrying about me. Ellipsis. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How's it possible that security kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why is it doing? Huh? Why is it you've never told me about this? It's almost... I feel like you've betrayed... I almost feel like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I'd known, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I can do. I would have uh, tried a little bit harder to make it every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. 
All you have to do is tell me. You don't understand at all, Kwan. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of just doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung against me. Wait, it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Jesus Christ! The fuck? <laughs> That's why I wanted badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping, ever, helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. She sounds suicidal. I'm gonna be honest. Do you think that Yoshi gets embarrassed when he poos out eggs in front Don't of stop. Mario? She sounds, Sorry. she sounds fucking suicidal, dude. She like, uh, it sounds like she's planning on leaving. And like, I'm replacing her. To Jesus Christ. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club. Feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> you're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. He doesn't want your pity, bitch. No, Quan. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sari's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Jesus Christ! Without thinking, once again grabs to Terry's shoulders. This time I uh, pull it. I was going to say, you need to give her an embrace. A hug. That's what you need to do. That's when you hug. Right? I'm autistic, but even I know that's when you hug. Ah. Quan. Siori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I, to, if I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Go on. Satori isn't hugging back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Satori's arms remain at her sides. Oh shit, dude. Oh shit, that's what Abby does when she's pissed. That's what Abby that's what Abby does when she's pissed. She's not having it. Even the hug, when you try to do the hug, when you when she doesn't hug back, you know that it's bad. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. What? Hey. Scotori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call, uh, if you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have uh, to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything uh, that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. Ellipsis. Gently Satori puts down her arms. No, Gently Satori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, but the only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Satori lets me go. As she does, I let it go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. 
How would you like me to spend it all with you? Um. Ah. It's what I want. I promise. I. I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Tori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. Cancel! Cancel, pussy! Cancel, pussy, and eat her ass! What are you doing? Cancel, bro! No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. Cancel, bro! But... It's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Siri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah. It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. That's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I'll look forward to it. Oh, shit. I say goodbye to Siri and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. It's hard for me to keep thinking about. Uh, uh, it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Satori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. Oh shit, dude! I approach my house and I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Uh. Thank goodness, you were a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Jesus Christ. Jesus, look at those bazonkas. Wait, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, she's, a, she's a 2D anime girl. Were you waiting for me? Uh, were you waiting a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You could have just texted me. Oh, wait, you could have just texted me. Uh, if I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more my home. I suppose that's true. I didn't really think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. Satori who? Am I right, guys? <laughs> true, true, dude. At least I uh, hope I got everything. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh shit, she's in the bedroom, dude. Is, um, are the parents home? What's the deal? I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... It's very considerate of you to do. Ah, uh, no. It, I would really embarrass if my room would be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Jesus Christ, that's fucking waifu material, bro. Oh shit. Ah. That would be even more embarrassing. Wait. Don't look in there. I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. What was in there, bro? What was in there? What the fuck was in there, bro? Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. What the fuck was in there? Was a cum sock in there? This dildo? Like what? She puts both of her hands firmly on her lap, making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. I have a few things planned that you can help with. Maybe it was the, the poem? Maybe it was the poem or something? I don't know, why would he... Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. <laughs> atmospheric enhancements? <laughs> you know what? Like, actually, dude. You know, mood lighting and uh, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned uh, taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that, uh, you're a pretty intense person. Ah, intense? I guess the best, the best way of putting it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. 
It's just something uh, that I like. Uh, something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? Oh my God! Just have sex already, bro. That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. You can relax a little. Relax? I brought some things for relaxation. <laughs> I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what did she brought, dude? Oh, yeah, like what? Let's see. Your grandma just threw it back. She pulls out a few candles and wooden cylinder. Wait. And a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some chopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover up the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that'd be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that'd be really neat. It sounds fucking weird, bro, I'm gonna be honest. How the fuck are you gonna read? What's that wooden thing, though? Yeah, what? A wooden cylinder ch What is this? What is that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to positive atmospheres. Depending on the herbs and oils you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes a cylinder and pushes it, uh, pushes a switch on the bottom. Just, uh, in just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout out of a small hole on the top. What the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, okay, wait, she's saying it helps her with romance? Wow, that smells wonderful! What kind of mood is that one for? This is jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? That's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your mood and your emotions. Helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that'll be perfect for sharing our palms? Look at chat. Okay, dude. Um, Abby loves this kind of shit, by the way. So you can't. Do not even like Abby. Abby would be if she turned into this stream. She'd be like, hell yeah. Quad. Oh my god, she sold me five Milena with blood on step. <laughs> what even is this trash? Do you think that'd be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot more about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She then reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? They're gonna try to make Pappy grains. Oh shit, dude. What we'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We we'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What would that be used for? Well, I'm gonna cut pieces of ribbons and hang them from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that just be beautiful? Holy fuck! It's just fucking... Something needs to fucking happen, bro. It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little uh, intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Oh, shit. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a market coin. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once uh, I finish cutting the ribbons. Alright. Sitting on the floor together, we'll two of us get to work. Carefully, I draw different characters on paper, doing my best to manage the, my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon uh, to a desired length. She reaches into her bag and pulls out a pocket knife. Oh shit, what the fuck? Oh shit, it's about to get real, boy. It's about to get real. Huh? 
The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has intricate patterns of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. That looks really fancy. <laughs> well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each your own, you know. If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. <laughs> <laughs> She's been killing fucking raccoons, hasn't she? They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. A combination of craftsmanship and feeling the danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny. How nervous you got about sharing. Uh, so well... It's well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. Every dude's into knives. That You'd just be like, that's badass. But I don't think it's... Uh, but I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, I think it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes their expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Oh, I love that feeling, bro! I fucking love that feeling! I love the feeling of, like, heavy, solid shit, bro! Especially knives. Knives are fucking awesome. Dude, this is actually sick. That's, oh, bro, that feeling of, like, something just being high quality. You know, you get, like, something that's just high quality. Like, a, you know when you get, like, a real nice cell phone? You know when you get, like, a real nice cell phone? Or, like, a fucking, like, a bull bearing? Or, like, a fucking, a, a really nice, like, blade? Heavy as well. Well, generally, it's something that's, like, versus, like, something that feels light and trashy. I don't know. It's an autism thing, I think. I think it's an autism thing, but I fucking love high quality, dense shit. I don't know what it is. Something about that shit gets me going. What do you even get a life like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the, with my index finger. Ow! Quan! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. I can cut through skin like. It's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the sides of my finger. He retakes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah! She stares at, at it and noticeably fidgets. If she's squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah! Without wanting. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, Jay! What the fuck, dude? No, bro! What the fuck? She just straight up ingests his bodily fluids? Oh, Jesus! That's a bad bitch! Oh, what the fuck? She just gets the finger and sucks it! That one Yuri puts him fin my finger in her mouth and licks it with the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. <laughs> What the fuck did I walk into? I never thought I'd see the day I yaya clap. <laughs> I feel a tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her, f her head and face is burning up. Yuri, that's, a, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I possibly do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, she was a little weird, and it took me as a surprise, but I guess uh, she was just trying to help, right? I mean, she's sucking bodily fluids out on the first, you know, time she's coming out of your house. That's a pretty good, you know, progression. Yuri, you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't uh, lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand, and I lick her index finger in return. Did you really just do that? Now we're even. Oh shit, they're looking at each other in their bedroom, dude. What the fuck? Yuri looked at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that'd be a bad idea. 
If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Quinn. Yuri giggles shyly. <laughs> yeah? Yuri calling me weird? I had no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, the bleeding's already stopped, I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our, per our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbons like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue making progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper and the ribbons, we lay them out side by side. It looks better than expected, and it will be very effective with the door curtain. It looks great! Good thing coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What's the next task? Okay, this thing's a fucking stick. Okay, where am I? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? Now let's create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. The oh, fuck's the paint tablet? Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water for to put each of these tablets in. Do you mind finishing uh, those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. What's she gonna do while I'm gone, dude? What is she gonna do while I'm gone? Is she gonna go into my dildo drawer? Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to get you small plastic bathroom cups rather than the full size glasses. I put them on a plate. Uh, to catch any paint that drips, and then bring them back up to my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve and putting it back over her arm. I, I, I come in and see to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve and putting it back over her arm. What's... Is she a fucking heroin addict? Is she a fucking... Is she cutting herself? She, what is she using those knives for? Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh... No, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we'd do something simple uh, that would look very nice. What the fuck's going on? the fuck is going on? I know... She, she a cutter? But I don't know, Yuri's not depressed, is she? So, like, why would she be doing that? What was she doing? She had... I like the painted gradient across the banner. Start off with the colors of the sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, we'll uh, write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Dude, they're going way too hard. Literally nobody wants to do this poem shit. What are you going to write? Well, it'd be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so, after rolling the banner, Yuri and, uh, Yuri and I kneel opposite sides. So we don't get in the way of each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yuri uses the brush to add a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as the color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with uh, watercolors, this feels a lot like art class projects we did back then. It's relaxing. Yo, ah, uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know. Yeah, it's fun. Glad you feel that way too. Yuri starts painting for a moment and thinking to herself, For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. It's kind of boring. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one pers one other person. Even if it's just something simple like reading, it doesn't matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about uh, things like anime and games, where I simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. You almost like me and you Twitch chat? Right? 
Oh, wait. I don't, I'm not trying to encourage parasocial relationships, though. Okay, I'm not your friend. Alright. Unless you're talking in chat all the time and I actually recognize your name. Okay, Just otherwise... take her clothes off already. Yo, I'm trying, bro! I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but at the same time causing my head to bum into hers. Yeah. Sorry. Yuri reels back and quickly lifts my hands. Wait, Yuri re reels back and I quickly lift my hands. I like knives. I are you. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm not hurt. Just startle me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. Or we it's are not friends. your fault. Ah, your face! There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Oh no, here we go. Is there something on my face? Oh, there's liquids on her face now. Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel when I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room uh, to kneel back down in front of her. Oh, Jesus Christ. You could have given her the towel, bro. You could have given her the towel, bro. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah. Something wrong? It's hard. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I started to retract my hands. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrists. Oh, shit. Wait. Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Jesus. Jesus Christ, bro. You need to commit right now, bro. If you don't go in right now for a kiss, then you're fucking retarded, bro. Ah. I'll keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an immense, intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Go in, bro! Go in! Almost as if uh, she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. Oh, fuck. She's mouth breathing now, dude? What the fuck? Wait, what's happening? Is it the, is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Oh, Jesus, bro! Oh, shit, bro! Ah. Yuri, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. Bro, she was giving you the chance to go in and you didn't go in, bro! What are you doing? I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. You fucking clown. You picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly receive my own brush and continue following uh, Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with the white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very important and natural looking. I think it came out better than expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you gonna add uh, the littering now? Ah, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't it take a while? Well, perhaps it'd be best to leave it here and then bring it to uh, bring it in the morning. I can do the littering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? Mate, you could stay around in my house for a bit longer, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, to let it dry. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything else for us to do here. DUDE! Fucking wanna just chill, bro! Phew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you're at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. What do you mean making dinner? Your mom's gonna make you dinner. 
so you don't have any time left. I was secretly hoping uh, we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I think it'd be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry, I was hoping there'd be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. You're such a pussy cuck, bro. Holy fuck. My guy's such a pussy cuck. He's such a pussy cuck, dude. No, it's uh, not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we're going uh, to get everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all the things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. Go, bro! Stop her, bro! I understand why. It sounded like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends. She's in a relaxed environment. But that means it doesn't mean it's the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk uh I walk her out of the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else I can bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri Fitch it. Bro, kiss her, pussy. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of said that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over. Okay, you're sounding like a desperate little cuck now, bro. Whenever you want, you can come over and we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. I stumble over my words. Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very, you're very thoughtful, Quan. Your taste is step closer to me and briefly squeezes my hand! Oh my god, bro! Go! I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Oh shit, bro! What the fuck? Oh, Satori! Oh no! Oh, she is here, bro! Huh? Ah, uh, hi, Gwen. Satori. Just now we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, Gwen. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, Dad, but I'm already on my way to leave. Ah, oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll be able to. Uh, but we'll we we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow. So, yeah, that's fine, right? Of course. Satori beams. Is it a fake beam? Is it a hollow beam, or was it an actual beam? I don't think it was an actual beam. Yeah. So. I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Satori waves goodbye after her. Say, Tori. I thought you didn't want to come over today. Wait, she caught us in the act, bro. We're about to hook up. The Oh my god, bro. Ah, uh, well. I tried staying in my room. But my imagination was being really mean to me. Doc arrived, finally a classic wholesome weeb game. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. How close you got to her. It makes me really happy. You've been amazing. You've made such good friends. Oh, she's lying. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Satori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Kwang? That's supposed to be happy for you. But why is it feeling my heart is spinning in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Satori, don't say that. It's true, Kwang. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to wage your sympathy why on me. Said. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? What should Monica tell you to do, Satori? Satori. 
What I said before is true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you, uh, caring about you like this Such isn't a burden. Also, ten out of ten acting. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. You it's something that makes me happy. Yo, is Monica a fucking demon, dude? And she's trying to get fucking Satori to kill herself? What the fuck? It's something that I uh, wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime. I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. Mate, okay, you need to calm down. Entire lifetime, that's too much. But, but. Satori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Kwan. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Satori? I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Satori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. One. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Satori. Slide my hand down Satori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what? Wait, wait. Do you, do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Satori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings. Fuck, I'm such a mansplainer, dude. I'm such a Giga Chad mansplainer. I know what you need the most right now. <laughs> it's this dick. Okay, you need this dick. And that's what I'm going to give to you. And that's what I'm going to give to you. What is he going to give to her, dude? What's he, what's he, is he actually a manipulator? And that's what I'm going to give to you. Oh, fuck. Oh, bro. If I say that, she's going to become depressed and kill herself. But then you shouldn't let a depressed person manipulate you. I mean, are we deep dicking Yuri boys? Are we going in for the Yuri? Are we going in for the Yuri? I mean, I don't know, dude. You always be my dearest friend. That will fucking destroy her, bro. That will fucking destroy her, bro. That will annihilate her, bro. That will fucking... Don't lie. Which well, is pretty cool. Unless she's depressed. Mm. I mean, I got it, right? I've been commit I've committed at this point. I, I, dude, I don't know, man. I wouldn't say either of these. I wouldn't say either of these. I don't think it's an ultimatum. I don't think it's an ultimatum. Well, is it though? Because no, she's madly in love with you. Yeah, nah. Maybe you could just have two girlfriends. Maybe the reason Sayori is so fucking depressed is because for the entirety of your relationship, you've been calling her Satori Lol. Okay, dude. Okay. You, you'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. Now you've been struggling uh, with some really difficult feelings right now. But please trust me that I know what's best and will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were before. I... I see. Ah! The toy was the smile to an incredibly pained expression. Ah, bro. <laughs> is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? Ah, oh, bro, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that, IRL. But I couldn't do that. Ah, uh, that's brutal. That's fucking brutal. I don't know. Um, 
I would try my hardest to please both of them simultaneously. Okay, somehow. And then it'd probably blow up, and I mean, whatever. Load. I mean, do I load, dude? Do I load? Do I load, dude? I did save. Do I load back? I should write a poem about this. Satori, it's okay. It's just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down this path. That's why I came here. So you get the answer I need to hear. And the other thing, you're so right that I just want to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone else, Quan. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, Satori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly Thank as she can. Thank you, an can. anonymous gift for gifting. I underscore enjoy underscore smelling underscore feces a subscription. I'm shocked and I don't know how to react. An anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to I underscore enjoy un Satori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more week's mile before turning around and running off. Satori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. I've done the most to support Satori through her feelings to help her on the path that feels right. But there's so much trouble understanding Satori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering uh, if I should do something more, something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Satori will always be my dearest friend. I will do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Shit, man. What the fuck? It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where we were walking to do it with Satori. But Satori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that it's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to begin anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. Probably more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Satori and Yuri at the festival. Uh, but knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Quan, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. It's funny, I, I thought at least Yuri would uh, be here by now. Monica is uh, placing uh, little booklets on the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she's prepared uh, with all the poems that they're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like, and it submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring uh, Satori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that uh, on days that this important, she'd be trying a little bit harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember Sat uh, what Satori told me yesterday. Yeah, she's literally depressed. Why are you saying that she just slipped in, bro? She'd be like, yeah, she's literally got depression. I suddenly feel awful knowing that it's not so simple. I mean, obviously you knew that when you were saying that, dude. I mean, bro. I only said that because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Quan. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. What the fuck? Is she some of a fucking all-seeing demon? Is she some sort of all-seeing demon? Exchange. Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Satori really tell you about that, that quickly? About how I basically turned down a confession? That makes me uh, really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm, really, uh, but I'm the only one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the uh, full story at all, so... Don't worry. 
I probably know a lot more than you think. She is fucking possessed, bro. She is fucking possessed. Huh? Monica is being friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Yeah, what the fuck? Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the discs. Oh, yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Finally, some content, sir -o. Yeah, I thought so, too. Plot twist. Monica is the final <laughs> Dr. Golden Rook. I flipped through... Did he try and spoil? I don't know what I heard. I don't. I said something. Wait, I'm not even. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm, I don't want any spoilers. I'm closing down all donations. Where the fuck is this? Closing that down. You, I can't see any of that shit. T just mute all these. Can we pause donations? I just. I. I close the page. Close the page. I flip through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's uh, this? guys. I flipped to Satori's poem. It's different from the ones you practice. It's one that I haven't read before. Get out of my head. 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 Get out Action of my head. Is coming. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. Wait. Is Monica even real? Wait, am I real? I've there's something going on here. Get out of my head before I do not know what I get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. The poem is actually never finished. It just stops moving. I mean, Monica, you know, okay, so wait, what the fuck? There is, that like, there is some, this is like some Matrix level shit right now. This is some Matrix level shit right now. I'm just going to continue. I have a suspicion. I'm, I have a very serious suspicion. Um, What is this? Reading the palm, I get a pit in my stomach. Quan, what's wrong? And why is she acting so fucking weird about real serious shit? She's a fucking... Is she, I don't even know if she's fucking real. I don't know if she is. Maybe she, Monica is. Satori? I, wait. The poem feels completely different from everything else Satori's written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Satori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? Quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. She's fucked. She is fucked. What the fuck? Monica calls out. Monica calls that out after me. Don't. Sh I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Satori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or wake her up. Even the simple gesture of waking her up to go to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her... Yesterday, that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs. That's all I want to give her. I reached to Satori's house and knock on the door. Didn't ex I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Um, like yesterday, I left the I uh, the I opened the door and let myself in. Satori. She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more something like a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Satori's room, I knock on her door. Satori? 
Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it a kind of breach of privacy? She really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh, I got the chills. Ah, oh, don't you? What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Ah, I got goosebumps, man. This is fucked up. An exception has occurred. On 307, C trace back to TXT with details. What the hell? Am I in a game? I think I am, right? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this could be real. So Terry wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday. I told Satori I'd be there for her. I told her I know it's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down a confession? That has to be what has uh, pushed her over the edge. I agonized scream till it echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school and gave her what I know she wanted out of her relationship, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friends. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Well, you need to go to the police, man. Like, you're gonna need to go to the fucking police, man. Like, what the f- Nothing I can do to bring it back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I only have one chance. <laughs> These fucking self- like, this fourth wall breaking, dude. I only have one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. And, uh, now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life was worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 And Jesus Christ, bro! Okay, so wait, she's also emotionally unstable. I think if she would also probably- This is probably fucked, right? She probably also kills herself. There's probably- is there even a win condition? What the fuck? What is this? I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms. Like she's totally oblivious to any intention she might draw herself. The girl is... And my neighbor. Okay, for instance, we're children. You know, just like the kind of friend you never see yourself making. But it kind of works because you've known each other so long. She could be all... Okay, however... If I have to cross the crop floor, I can let catch up to me. Let me fix it! I'm proud to call Quinn69 my primary streamer. He is a god gamer and destroys all games. Wait, is it new dialogue? Wait. Wait, what the fuck? 
Storm Drive is cool like any other. Why don't you look at the things that might normally be used in the West, being surrounded by couples. Frank is walking by the school. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. Oh, what the fuck? Wait, what the fuck? She's deleted, bro. She's deleted. I see another girl going towards me. She fucking glitches out. It's like erased. You know the kind of friend you never see yourself making. Okay, there we go. Thank you, an anonymous gifter, for gifting hanging with Sayori a subscription. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples. An anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to hang. Stop, dude! Literally, how the fuck do I turn these donations off? You're so cringe, dude. Like I'm literally trying to like fucking. How the fuck do I turn these things off? Mute. No. Wait, what the fuck? So now she doesn't exist anymore? So wait, but then how do I get into the literature club? Wait, how do I save her? I want to save her! It's like an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst. Being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I had no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just by getting uh, on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always some. There's always the anime club, but it's not like uh, there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pick up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would be too demanding. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Quan? Monica? How do I remember her, dude? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiled sweetly. You know, uh, we do know each other. Well, we really talked, but we're, uh, the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. She's a fucking demon. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Oh, Marcus. I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> About that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand uh, all the politics in the major clubs. Feels like nothing but arguing and a about budget. I guess you've already said this. I'd much rather make something uh, I personally enjoy and s something special out of it. In that case, what kind of club do you decide to join? Actually, I'm saying you want. It's called li Literature Club. Literature Club? Sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, haha. <laughs> Three. It's really hard to find your members. For something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members uh, even keeps a manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? Yeah, okay, dude. How many girls actually like anime, dude? Actually, to be fair, I feel now in the current year, anime is kind of like... It's kind of become a little bit meta. It, it went from like... Zero, or like 2%, to like... It's probably like 10% now. Abby's a weep. Uh, do you know that? Abby's a hardcore weep. Abby's a hardcore weep. Oh, no, no, no cap. She's watched Naruto like three times. <laughs> it's funny, right? Uh, she always insists the manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. Uh, besides, the member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Kwan. Mate, she's 12. Any chance he's still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... 
In that case, sweet chance you can do me a big favor. I mean, how are you going to say no to a demon succubus like that? I won't ask you to join, but uh, you could at least visit the club and make me very happy, please. Uh, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how would I ever refuse someone like Monica? What a pussy cook. Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet. Come on, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. Okay, the what the fuck is going on this? And thus, today marks the day that I sold my soul to Monica after her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs to a section of a school that I rarely visit, being generally uh, used for third classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back, and I brought a gift with me. Girl one, eh? I guess. Seriously, you brought a boy? I think all the amateur there. That'd be me, Nixuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Kwan. Oh, what's this game in this situation? This club. It's full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki! The girl with the sad as you do, the name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. A small figure makes me uh, think she's probably a first year. Uh, anyway, this uh, is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And uh, this is Yuri, the vice president. Wait, Yuri's the vice president? It's nice to meet you. Yuri appears comparably more mature and. And Timid seems to be having a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. I ran into Quan in the classroom and decided to check the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica! Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought someone new? I was going to, well, you know. She's gonna make cupcakes yet. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that. But it just happened to run into her. Okay, you literally glitch teleported in front of me like a demon. In that case, I should at least uh, make some tea, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Why don't you come sit down, Kwan? The girls have the desk arranged to form a table. Yuri uh, walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. What the fuck's in that closet, bro? Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Uh, still playing awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So you know, uh, so I know you didn't really plan coming here. We'll make sure we feel right at home, okay? It's President Electric Club, but it's my duty to make the club feel fun. Exciting for everyone to surprise. No more people aren't in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. <laughs> what the fuck's happening? I tried to load it and I got in some warp dimension where she no longer exists anymore. And now I'm fucking playing the game again. And every time there's something that she would be involved in, there's a weird demon glitch. Poggies. Who? Oh my god. Not many people are very interested in putting all this effort into starting something brand new. I mean, this is a meta game. They made the game. Like, a part of the story. Nice game. If you're done, PLS, watch all ends. I'm not done. What do you mean? I'm, what do you mean? No, I'm not done. Especially when it's uh, something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people to both find it worthwhile. Uh, okay. Wait, so can I just, like. Okay. Do we just start spamming? You return to the table. You keep a whole thesis in this classroom, you've already heard all this shit. Wait, this isn't new. Is this new? Is it new? Oh, fuck. You have to- Okay, Monica says you'll have to work uh, hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events on the visible mind much more important. Confident. I'm confident that we'll really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Nasuki? Well, I guess. Nasuki reluctantly agrees such different girls all interested in the same goal 
Monica must have really worked hard to find these two. Yuri uh, returned to the table carrying a tea set. This is the same thing, right? This is the same thing. She carefully uh, places the teacup before her robot. Down the pot in the middle. You keep the whole tea in the thing. Don't worry, the teacher gave us permission. After all, the this is literally the same thing. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Yeah, that's not insulted. Yuri looks away. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I will enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri finally smiles with self relief. So, Quan, what kind of things do you like to read? Ah, well, considering how little I've read in the past few years, I don't really know how to answer that. Anger? I'm out of myself half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Am I really gonna do the Peter route now? Like, is, is that. Oh, shit, what the fuck? Wait, that's actually not even a... This is like getting two meta, dude. I'm just gonna turn the browser sources off. Fuck it. I think his head perks up. Uh, okay, it looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Uh, well, that could change. What am I saying? I spoke uh, without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the remote to with the fingers. My favorite is usually novels, complex fantasy worlds. Okay. Are you telling me a story in a form? Okay. It's the same shit. She seemed reserved and timid for the moment after she walked in, but obviously we way. Okay, yep. Stories with deep psychological elements. They really gonna make me read the whole thing again? I think you're supposed to just skip it, yeah. I don't think they're meant for you to read the entire thing again, right? Why would you read the entire thing again? Hmm. Surreal horror. Is often successful at changing the way you look at the, at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. She wants to talk about anime. Wait, so this, so this is just like some ultra meta story about how I'm in a surreal horror. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Nitsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You look to scrap a paper down in the last club meeting. Wait, is this a part of the game? This loading sign? Okay, I can read faster by reading it. Okay. This is literally the same game. We will write a poem. It's a key and look quizzically. How we write a poem of our own? Then we'll meet up and we'll do the poems. That way we're even. Okay, yeah, poggies. It's not new! It's not new! It's not new! I read all this! It's not new! Literally, look! I think you write your own poems? Yeah, I guess. We sure sometimes she did say, eyes. You wouldn't like them. Not a very confident writer. This is all the same shit. Do you have experience writing as well too, Yuri? Maybe you share some of your work. Give an example. Yuri does an ellipsis. Okay, how many ellipses have you done? Because it's the same for Yuri. We'll sit there in silence. And then they, she does the thing where they say, let's all make a poem. And then it's going to do that fucking thing, dude. It's the same thing. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President after all. I need to do my best to uh, nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like... Uh, I never said we were going to be a member, thank you very much. It seems to be a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Kwan? Hold on. There's one problem. What's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, uh, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I've never said I'd join the club! 
Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made my decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lost my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> the girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Quan. What? The thing is... We don't have enough club members yet to form an official club. We need four. And I've been trying really, really hard to find your members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear headed decision what, when it's like this? I'd feel terrible for letting uh, everyone down in the situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. This is new. Okay, this is new. So running palms uh, is the price to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided that. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls slides light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Quan? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really don't didn't scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really uh, just left after all this, I'd be super pissed. You didn't even do anything! You didn't even make me cupcakes! Quan, I'm happy. Can we become official club? We're official club now. Thank you for this. You're really amazing. Oh, shit. I'll do everything I can to make it have a great time, okay? Ah, uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem and bring it to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over me once more. Juan, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really express myself? Uh, can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. See you tomorrow then. I can't wait. Do the voices. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The way home, my mind wanders back and forth between these three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I've just completely forgot about the other... Uh, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure God and Fortune will find me. And I guess that's where it starts with writing a poem tonight. Okay, so we're gonna make a poem. You've unlocked a special poem, would you like to read it? If I convince myself to go to therapy... If I, can, if I can't convince myself to go to therapy, then I'm the happiest I've ever been. Ah, why did I get to read the poem? Why did I get to read the poem? I, oh, I tried to drag it to the right because I didn't see all the letters. Wait, what did it say? What did the bottom one say? I clicked. Can someone clip it so I can read it? Ugh. I'm not dumb! The secret poem. I'd rather keep this up until I blow my cover and someone takes me to the emergency room. Jesus Christ, is that a secret poem from fucking... Is that a secret poem from, um... The fuck she called? Wait, notice that Monica's not here? Notice that Monica's not here? I've already forgot it. Satori, dude. Satori. You guys know Satori. Satori's gone. Wait, where's Monica? How come Monica's not on here? Who's he talking about? Why are you guys role-playing as a part of this game, you sick fucks? Okay. Do we double impress? Do we speed run? Okay, let's just speed run. Tragedy! Infinite! Entropy! Graveyard! Now they flee! Disarray! Frightening! 
explode, massacre, instable, melancholy, defeat, grief, ambient, crimson, shiny. Adventure. Uh. Not anime. Excitement. Okay. Eternity. Unending. Alright, there we go. I'm just... No, we're not doing the... I'm not, I don't want to speed run. Okay. Hey, Grand Clan. Let's see you didn't run away again. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. No, don't worry. This might be a little bit strange for me, but uh, at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the Literature Club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone is already hanging out. What the fuck? Thanks for keeping your promise, Kwan. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making uh, you dive head first into literature when you're not accustomed to it. What the fuck? Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. You already uh, had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. I can't read. I can't. Re it took you finds which a file st stuck between saying Monica and Manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated. It. Okay, I'm sorry, Quan. We'll make sure we uh put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Nasugi with a disappointed glance. Um. Anyway. Now that you're in the club and all, uh, perhaps you might have some interest in uh, picking a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in the club now, so it only feels right for me to do something that, uh, like that if you ask. W wait, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, you don't really need. Uh, if you don't want to, then forget I said anything. I guess. Ah, uh, no, it's not that, Yuri. I don't want to try to be a part of this club. Wait, I want to try to be a part of this club. <laughs> so even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Are you sure? I just felt like, well, as a vice president at all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. What is happening right now, bro? What is happening? The music's glitching out? The room's like fucking sideways or some shit? Is, is this shit distorting? Holy press, fuck. Been back after five living. hours and are you still in the same fucking room? I'm are not in the same room! WTFF. Oh my god. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so uh, I should keep your attention if you don't usually read. And, you know, we could, uh, discuss it if you wanted. This is, uh, how... How was this girl being so accidentally so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like. Despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll read this. Enthusiastically, I take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Not everyone settled in. I expect the monitor to kick off some schedule activities at the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, that Suki is rummaging the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting him from reading. I got the clump of her over the cover of the book. Listen, she sent it over to me. Well, that should have been pages. Huh. Crap. I think she knows me looking at her. This is the same shit, right? Okay, I'm just reading the book. It's up to the bookstore yesterday. It's having to buy two of them. Okay. Okay, she looks at the back of the book now. I'm, re I'm reading it. I'm speed reading it. To make sure there's nothing here. Wait, that's different, right? 
Oh, sorry. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. Oh, no, that's the same. The facility gets even worse, and they even slowly start breeding people by cutting off their limbs and asphyxing them too. Wait, what the fuck? She was supposed to look at the back of the book. No, it's slightly different, isn't it? Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler, but anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not about the limbs. That's kind of... dark, isn't it? Yuri made the uh, sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that the dark turn came out of nowhere. Ah, you're not really a fan of that sort of thing, are you, Quan? No, it's not that. I can uh, enjoy those kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot Yuri's into those things. She's shy and recluse from the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just uh, that this kind of story, it's uh, the kind that challenges you to look at life from a new strange perspective. Horrible uh, things happen. Why are they changing tiny things? I'm confused. Why are they making me relive this entire fucking thing, but then changing very small things? When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should get to... Uh, but I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I slid things like books and writing for my thoughts, my whole body gets... What the fuck? I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. Please stop me if I'm talking a little bit too much. That's... I couldn't read what it said. Is it messages from Satori? Is it Satori? Was it copying and pasting shit Satori was saying? It's a literature club after all. Ah, uh, that's... well, that's true. In fact, might as well get started reading, right? Bro, they gave me a jump scare. Can you stop that shit? Yes. I mean, you shouldn't have to, but... What are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book and put it into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip in the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, yeah. Are you sure? You seem to be a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I uh, don't want you to just something that I'm not very used to. That's, uh, reading company of someone else. I see. Well, just let me know if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start reading the prologue. Soon I seem to understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel a presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. That was just print screen. Fuck! Pause that! I want to read that! Do you want me to clip that? What did it say? I think you're supposed to be able to read quickly, but I can't read fast. Never really mean to. Sorry. I mean... This should work, right? I slide my desk up against Yuri's and hold my book between the two of them. Ah, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. We want to lean in a bit. Our shoulders are almost touching. Feels like my left arm is in the way, so I use my right hand to hold back the book. I guess it makes things kind of different to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and her forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, uh, if I turn a page, Yuri slides it under her thumb. Yep. Start fitting your chocolates already. We've had all closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. Is this if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face in the corner of my vision? Are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. 
I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, it's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being impatient if you take a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asked me to really turn the page. Instead, to just assume the page and turn the page on our volition. We continue to read the page in silence. Even just turning the pages is intimate. My thumb and gently let's go to the page, and then it goes, yep. Hey, Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you. Eh? I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was thinking the way she second guesses and the way she says... It's everything she says and all that. Ah, that's what you're talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. Oh, God. Does she cut people up with knives? So I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Are you feeling all right? Eh? Yuri's been a little bit fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't put yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Quan? Did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? No. Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure you didn't do anything to her. No, no, nothing. <laughs> Don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri does this sometimes, so it's uh, nothing alarming. I feel like she's evil. And this is all her chewing. I don't know what the fuck she's... This is like some sick fucking game she's playing. <laughs> anyway, why don't we start with sharing our bonds with each other, huh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figure we get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up, I make a middle note of where I left the book, and I just slip it back into my bag. Okay, Monica. I should start with Monica. Yesterday she seemed eager to read my poem and I wanted to know I'm putting in effort. Hi Gwen, having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you were uh, new and everything, if you have any suggestions for the club or new activities or something we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring them up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be uh, afraid to bring things up. Much better off just coming with the flow until I'm more settled. Anyway... I want, to share my po I want to share a poem with me. It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Kwan. We're all a little bit embarrassed today, you know? But that's the sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Monica, my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Kwan. I was going, oh, in my head when reading it. It's really metaphorical. What is this shit? Quilf. I have no idea what's happening, I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easier for me to keep an exp uh, it's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is detached from reality. I don't mean like that's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression she's totally given up on people. She spent so much time in her own head, probably a, a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. So she must be really starved for social interaction, so I don't blame her for coming on a little uh, strongly. Like earlier. I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for an alone time. Suddenly a door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? No, really. We started sharing our bonds with each other. Eh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, and I'm glad that you 
took all the time you needed. All right. Thanks, Monica. I suppose you should get my poem now. You know, anyway, you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident with someone who's... Okay. Okay. Is this a new poem? Hole in the wall! But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glanced at my ceramics. But my burned eyes can no longer see Killen. Are there any others in this room? Are they? Or are they simply poems on a flash sheet of paper? The sound of frantic scrolling playing ticks in my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before my reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right here. It's right here. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. think <laughs> yeah that's great that's great monica really good totally not concerning at all it's query free form if that's what you call it i'm sorry it's not really the right person to be asking for feedback it's okay yeah that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays yep when a poem in atlanta can be very powerful what's the inspiration behind this one ah well i'm not sure how to put it I guess you could say uh, that I had some kind of epiphany recently. Been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of uh, coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try uh, so hard to make it perfect, then you're not going to make any progress. Just force yourself to put something on paper and then tidy up later. Yep. Thanks for listening. It's... Press skip when it lights up. Wait, when does skip light up? What do you mean by press skip when it lights up? Do I want to press skip? I guess that's everyone. Glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. But I was supposed to do that, right? Whenever it's not great. Oh, so it's not great right now. So that means I... Yeah. I see. Okay, I get it. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. Stop. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my pawns can stand up to this. It's a little... Uh, this is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's uh, what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on uh, Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch their expressions change. Nesuki eyebrows furls in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Yeah. Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Nesuki dismissively returns the palm to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? This feels the same. It's clearly about the feeling of uh, giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try it hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks. But it really didn't come out like nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Quan did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you... Uh, so based on that, I'll gladly give you suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change it anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. 
Mm. And Quan liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... You, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Quan appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know that he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? <laughs> no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <laughs> well, you know what? I wasn't the only one whose boobs magically grew his sizes. Santa's Quan said is showing up. <laughs> Natsuki, son. Um, Natsuki. That's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities and others like that. You really act as you... You, you really act as young as you look, Natsuki! Me? Look who's talking! You wanna be edgy, bitch? Edgy! Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone in middle age to comprehend! See? Just saying that proves my point! Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know? If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude! You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by just dressing and acting cute? The only thing cute about you is how hard you try! Whoa! Be careful! You might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri! Oh, my bad! You really do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? She, what the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on! Let Quan hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be hit over heels after this. Ah! Uh, suddenly, Yuri turns to me as if she just noticed I was standing here. Quan! She's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Ugh. How did I get dragged with this? Yuri was cutting herself. Remember when she would quickly drag this? She was cutting herself, bro. She was cutting herself. I mean, Yuri, she's uh, just. Yeah, Natsuki's not of age. Yuri! Yuri! Um, hey, Quan. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Sorry about that. I really shouldn't uh, have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? I can't believe uh, I can't even confront my own Columbus properly. I wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes, but I'll never uh, have an enemy to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you uh, want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. But suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. Oh, shit. She runs away quickly. Oh, dear. Well, it looks like they're done. Jesus Christ! I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Quan, please don't hate me. Please? Please, I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We all know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. <laughs> anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Ellipsis. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You, you can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. 
I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Ellipsis, ellipsis. Well, I'm the vice president, so... Please let me take that responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Quan. I, uh, it would just be embarrassing with uh, yeah, yeah. you listening. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I re- Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't want to rush it. How, like, am I halfway through? Am I at the last 10% of the game? All right. All right, we're gonna continue tomorrow. Right, I'm gonna save. Wait. Saving is gone, dude. What the fuck? Did saving even do anything? Does saving even do anything? Because <laughs> the game is a game within a game, right? It's like, um... It's fake. It's not actually really saving, is it? Like, the save, the save mechanic isn't real. Yeah, I must admit, it makes it more immersive and freaks me the fuck out. Like, when I exit, is it closed? Is it actually closed? Am I on my computer, dude? Do you know what it kind of does? It's like when you play those games where you're, like, hacking, um... It reminds... I'm getting kind of vibes. I'm getting vibes. Um, do you remember... Was it called Welcome to the Game? Wait, is it called Welcome to the Game? Wait, what's, it called? what's that game called? You know the one where you're on the computer, in a computer, and then because you go to the computer, it makes you get fully immersed because you're, like, scrolling through trying to hack shit? It's like that. Welcome to the Game. Yeah, it reminds me... I'm getting Welcome to the Game vibes. Check file. Um, okay. Check the files. What does that mean by check the files? There we go. Oh, the file it mentioned. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it came up and popped out, like saying it was corrupt or something. The text file on the folder. Oh, shit, bro. What the fuck? Okay, stop, though. Wait, stop. Oh, my God. Is that going to be a part of the game where you literally have to go, uh, like, fucking incentivizes you to go check files on your computer and there's shit in your PC, bro? That's going to fuck. Jesus. Dude, stop, though. Stop. Okay, that's cringe shit. Don't backseat. Don't backseat. Don't backseat. Um, okay, holy shit. I, I mean, today, boys, today was not a day that I was expecting. I'm going to be real. Today was not a day that I was expecting. Um, and this game's fucking weird, but I'm kind of like, I've got, I'm, I kind of like, I mean, I mean, there's no doubt. Like, dude, that, that emotionally fucked me up. But that, that, that is like, um, but then it's kind of weird that I'm sitting there fucking reading all day. Like, what the fuck? It's, and it's weird because it starts off as like this anime super like cutesy fucking thing. And it gets like, you think it's like a little anime novel thing where you're trying to like just reproduce with the characters. But actually turns out fucking some fucked up shit's going. And then it's like a game within a game with this whole really meta narrative. It's kind of crazy. Uh, we will continue tomorrow. The streams do start one hour earlier than usual, though, if you're not from America. So I will be on an hour you, an hour early. Okay? We'll be finishing off this game, absolutely destroying it. Blind. Solo cell found. 
Okay. Rest in peace, Satori. I knew I should have said... I knew I should have fucking... To be fair, though, if I had done the thing with Satori, Yuri's also immediately unstable. I don't know. I don't know if there was even a right choice there. Who? Okay. <laughs> okay, dude. Regardless... Thank you for chilling out today, boys. Really do appreciate it. It was a fucking weird day. Tomorrow's also going to be a weird day. I'll see you guys then. Have a good one, team. Have a good one. Getting unlocking all the waifus tomorrow. We're going to save all the waifus. No more waifus will die. Okay? No more waifus will die. I will protect them all. Okay? And we're going to be up to... Um... Titties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'll save all the waifus and we're going to unlock the, the secret anime titty scene. Peace.